It's hump day. You know what time it is? It's time for Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. Yes, Wednesday night, the glorified version of a bass fishing talk show starts right now. I'm your host, Pat Renwick, and tonight, another wing ding, wang dang doodle. Mm-hmm. of a show worked up for you tonight we are uh we're pretty excited to bring to you action packed chock full of bass action tonight starting off first uh we have the 2017 bass angler of the year brandon palinick coming on yes <laughs> Woo! oh bmp coming on first <laughs> then we bring you la flama blanca the Kenny Powers of bass fishing, JT Kenny in the house. Yes, one of our favorites. One of our absolute favorites. And then uh, the winner of the big uh, SBOBT. That's the Sturgeon Bay Bass Open Tournament uh, Extraordinaire Deluxe. Yes. Jason Stangle joins us. Yeah. And then. Straight out of Conson. <laughs> exactly. And then the, the, the guest that you're all waiting for, Nicole Dorr, Bass Fishing Supermodel, gives away the big prize tonight. Woo! Woo! Yeah. What is the big prize? The big prize tonight is very simple to obtain. In fact, it's probably more simple to obtain on this bass fishing talk show than any other bass fishing talk show on the web. And all you have to do is like and share the live Facebook feed, and tonight, what you get is a $50 redemption code to alphaangler.com. That's right. Nice. That's the deal. You get a $50 redemption code to alphaangler.com. You could use it towards the purchase of an Alpha Angler rod. You can use it for Alpha Angler merch, or you could use it um, towards uh, $50 off of a guided fishing trip with Brandon Palinick. That's right. So basically, yeah, that's only going to cost, it's usually $800,000 to yes. fish with Brandon. So uh, basically, it's going to be $50 less than that. If you want to do the math, that's fine. That's not bad. But all you have to do is like and share the Facebook feed, and you get a $50 redemption code to alphaangler.com. And the Cold Door Bass Fishing Supermodel will be on here at the end to announce the lucky winner get you a zilla the zilla is my favorite we'll get into that though we'll get into that a little later this guy speaking in zilla tongues over here Mm -hmm. uh he is the one and only um uh you guys know him as as lots of things (laughs) i was gonna say something i shouldn't say (laughs) so (laughs) ladies and gentlemen give it up for my buddy ryan popcorn whitaker right there even if you do it on accident i don't care yes yes he's not from west wisconsin but he should be from west wisconsin I go there sometimes. He actually has cheese, cheese curds in his pocket. He's not just happy to see you. <clears throat> I like to keep them warm. They're cheese curds in, in his pocket. Uh, the OG hip hop fisherman is the guy sitting over here. Ladies and gentlemen, he's my hero. It is yeah. JP. <laughs> hey, the hip hop fisherman. Yeah. yeah. What up? What up? It's JP High. He's a tournament that was a good guy. year. He's a tournament guy. That yeah. was powerful. I get lots of fan mail addressed to you, JP. Yeah. You know, n- nothing to me, but it's all to you. What? What is it? They want more. Yeah. Yeah. How come you're not giving it to me? I just keep it from you. I want your head to get too big. Yeah. I don't want you. You already have a huge. <laughs> you have to buy new headphones. <laughs> he already has a huge rider in a list of requirements before he can do any show. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I try and keep it. At an, at, a, at an even pace. Purple drink. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, purple drink, no brown M&Ms, the whole Six deal. Six white monsters. The whole deal. The guy over there in a bright yeah. light fright shining like a ray of light. The one and only Andrew freaking Ellenberger, the ginger ninja. Oh, hello. He's over there producing the snot out of this deal. Hello. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> it's, it's another big show tonight, and there's all kinds of great things going on in the bass world. And, and a couple things I always want to remind you t- about and give some shout-outs to. Um, first off, um, thank you again to Jay Kumar. He's showing us so much love uh, on the Bass Blaster. If you do not subscribe to the Bass Blaster, that is your own fault. Bassblaster.bassgold. Uh, you go there, sign up for the free email. It's a bi-weekly email. Everything going on in the bass fishing worlds. Thank you, Jay Kumar. Um, also, uh, again, BassUniversity.com. Uh, they have a special going on right now. It's 
I, I don't know. It's like 25% off or something still for celebrating KVD's 25 uh, win, 25th, win. 25th win. Yeah, and you can go there to thebassuniversity.com, click on the redemption code, get 25% off. And also you get um, a, f- a signed uh <laughs> A signed used T-shirt from Justin Kimmel. Yeah, yeah. I got. I am censoring myself tonight, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> I'm not sure why. My and there's crazy things going on in my brain, and I'm stopping them before they happen. So that's what I'm doing right now. Let's, let's open the floodgates on those, can we? <laughs> yeah, we will. trying to have a show. We'll wait. We'll wait for JT. We'll wait for JT Kenny Powers to come on here. Um, <laughs> so also, what else do I have on the agenda? Oh, it is uh, Cystic Fibrosis Month. Still the month of May is Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Month. Please go to cf. Dot, or fightcf.cff.org and uh, educate yourself uh, on cystic fibrosis and, and help uh, find a cure. Help find a cure for cystic fibrosis by going to fightcf.cff.org. Um, oh, the, also going on. Dude, have you guys seen this one-on-one deal yeah. uh, with, with Mark Jeffries? Yes. Dude, it was awesome today mm-hmm. with, with, with Crete and, uh, and McClellan, our buddies on there. Where do I see that? That is on thebasszone.com. I think they'll put the episode up. If it's not already up, it'll be up tomorrow. But it's outstanding. And they have a deal going on like where anybody can get in on this. You know, like, so if you want to, I know James Watson's got like five grand up right now. So if you go to thebasszone.com, you can fish against James Watson as long as you're throwing down 5K. And it's on James' home lake. He's setting it up for a win like he would do. You know, yeah. James. Yeah. So that, that's the deal right there. So if you put up the money, and there's different tiers, so you could actually challenge professional anglers. Like if I was going to challenge um, a professional angler, I think um, I would pick um, – Ski Reese? No, I would pick uh, – I would pick Dave for Mike Live, Stormtrooper. Okay. Yeah, I would fish against Stormtrooper for Mike Live, and I, but he would have to be in a kayak, and I would be in my bass boat. And he that's, could only throw Senkos, that's and I could throw fair. anything. Yeah, but we'd go on real rough water and make it super He'd catch fish behind you, though, because you're not throwing a Senko. Well, no, nah, it's okay. It's okay. We'd still, so we're challenging, and he'd be stealth. We're challenging Stormtrooper from, from Mike Live, old Dave Braz, Braznik. Braznik. However you say it's just it. how it's spelled. Yeah, it's just how it's spelled. Brozik. <laughs> Brosnolik. Dave from Ike Live. Who would you fish against, Ryan? I was trying to think of that. Yeah, who um, would you? Man. Never mind. JP, who would you fish oh. against? <laughs> oh, I want that Dave guy, too. You want da- Dave? You definitely want if Dave. If we're considering him a pro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dave, no, yeah. too. Yeah, see, I... Yeah, what did he call me? He called me Bubba Sparks with... No personality? Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot about the roasting. I, ju- I just want to fish against Dave because he's a cool guy. Not, I don't have a vendetta yeah, against I'll him. Ro- I'll roast him on the water. He's a good time. <laughs> wow. Dave's a good time. Going and now, at him. Yeah, you're challenging him. Who would you fish against, uh, Andrew Ellenberger? I guess just me and Stockholm. You against a producer versus producer. Uh-huh. Do you see how I did this? I weaved the Ike Live plug in along with the Mark Jeffries thing. Mm-hmm. You see how I did this? That's how you do a bass fishing talk show. I want right to take there. on Bo Dowden, actually. Bo, Bo Dowden's dead, so you, no, you would win. No, I want Mark Jeffries, it's too. not true. Mark Jeffries is, is a hell of a stick. So also, before uh, we get to the, uh, to the show... I want to uh, let you know that this Saturday at the Centennial Park in Munster is the Munster Volunteer Firefighters uh, Fishing Derby. That goes on every year. It starts at 7.30. It's uh, $10 per person or $20 per family. All kinds of great prizes. Uh, all the proceeds go to the Munster Volunteer Firefighters. And uh, you can find that on the Munster, uh, Indiana Volunteer Firefighters page on the book face. There it is, right there. Hey, how about we put the power poles down? When we get back, we're coming back with the dude, Brandon Palinick. Don't go nowhere. Step up your game. It has been said that professionals are only as good as the tools they work with. And Alpha Angler has developed the ultimate set of tools for you, the competitive angler. 
Alpha Angler Custom Rods, brought to fruition by the passion of Master Craftsman Jake Boomer and 2017 BASS Angler of the Year Brandon Palinick. Alpha Angler Rods are custom made in the USA designed and engineered to be perfect. Alpha Angler utilizes a very unconventional approach to making the very best bass rods from drop shotting to flipping. Alpha Angler's focus is on building perfectly balanced tournament grade bass rods at an affordable price. Join the Alpha Lusion today and purchase direct at alphaangler.com. Step up your game, alphaangler.com. Discover the magic of balsa. For decades, professional fishermen and the angling elite come to rely on the fish catching performance of hand carved custom balsa lures. PH Custom Lures by Phil Hunt have assembled the comprehensive line of custom balsa baits. The original Hunt and Pete, Bill Lowen's Dollar Bill, Wesley Strader's Plop and Pete, and the new Matt Heron Fudd, in addition to the entire family of PH Custom Lures, are just what you need to get that edge over the competition. Discover the magic of balsa today and visit PH Custom Lures. Lures.com. That's phcustomlures.com. Taming the beast isn't easy, but the bigger your electronics, the more you have on the line. In conditions like this, you need the KVD Kong Extreme Electronics Mount. The only electronics mount designed and built to be rock solid. No movement, no matter how heavy your gear. A marine grade mount for fresh or salt water that's monstrously strong. The KVD Kong Extreme Electronics Mount. Welcome back, Straight Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. The madness continues right here, right now. I'm your host, Pat Renwick, Ryan Popcorn Whitaker, JP High, and Andrew Ellenberger, the Ginger Ninja. We are waiting now uh, on Brandon Palinick. He's, he's having some technical difficulties in his Idaho home, where he is back at right now from his trip to Alaska. Uh, I want to remind you, uh, the phone lines are always open here, okay? And the phone number is 520 520- 214-2277, 520-214-2277. Feel free to call us up. We accept crank calls. We accept everything here. Any questions? Yeah, please somebody and, prank us. Yeah, we, Nobody's we haven't got one since uh, since Bradley Dorch's dad <laughs> crank, crank called us. That was um, unintentional. That was awesome, though. Uh, and, and also, um, I want to remind you that you can win a $50 uh, voucher code to alphaangler.com and all you have to do is like and share this live facebook feed real easy what do they do jp like and share like and share the live yeah. facebook feed onto your own page and uh, and there's a chance to win a 50 dollars voucher for alphaangler.com you can use it towards merch you can use it towards uh an alpha angler rod that rebound get that rebound you, get you the rebound. love the rebound yeah, I'm a big fan awesome. of, all, of all of them. The Zilla, the Rebound. I even I even had a wrench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You did. I did have a wrench. Where'd that go? I, I don't know. Some I'm not, I don't get along with spinning rods well. <laughs> Something happened to me. Something crazy happened. You couldn't to me. grip it with the opposite hand. Something happened. I don't even know. But uh, yeah, that's like and share the Facebook feed. For the deal right there. Hey, I want to remind you too, a lot of people know and a lot of people do not know that StrayCast is available on iTunes. Okay, so subscribe to our iTunes. All you got to do, go to your Apple phone, right, JP? Yeah, smash that button. Smash that smash Apple or non -Apple. phone button. What, yeah. are, what are we Just saying, get the Ginger? iTunes app. Talk to me. All phones work. Yep. Oh, there's a phone call. Who can this be? Hello, hello. Greetings from New Jersey. What, what's going on? Nothing, Pat. How are you? Good. Jimmy how, fish. Who, oh, Jimmy Where's the, the fish? fish. What's going on, dude? What's happening? How you doing, man? I'm doing real good. How's the How's the Wawa? <laughs> Wawa's awesome. Sonic's better, though. Yeah, you like the, the Sonics are good. Super late at night with the super concrete shake. 
That was outstanding. Exactly. Yes. Well, I miss yeah. New Jersey. No, you don't. Is that is that wrong of me to say that, that I miss New Jersey? Who's Miss New Jersey? <laughs> miss New Jersey is so freaking hot, you would not believe it. I don't believe it. Right. <laughs> What's going on, Jamie? You guys coming out this year? Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, we're going to do you? some, yeah, we're going to bass fish. We're, uh, we, we actually uh, rented a, uh, a double wide trailer. And we're coming in with a band of circus midgets this year. We just got to find something to pull it. Can I say midgets? That's not politically correct, right? Yeah. Okay. We're coming in with a band of little people to the show. To I think the that's big Ike Live. Fo- well, that one. Yeah, to the Ike Live Foundation thing this year. Sweet. What are you, are you catching oh, fish, Jimmy? Sleep. A little bit. I'm getting out there. I got a couple good ones this year. You know, it's New Jersey, so um, nothing huge here. But getting out a little bit. JP you know. JP challenged um, Dave uh, Brosnick to uh, a uh, fish off on Mark Jeffries live one on one. Did you hear that? You. So Dave used to uh, Dave used to be a stick. I don't know if he fishes anymore though. Really? Yeah, I, I don't know. I uh, I heard he just gardens. I haven't seen him recently, <laughs> but he was uh, you know don't let him get you out on the river. He'll beat you up out there. <laughs> JP, he's giving you fair warning. That's Jim Fish three. How big is he? Like, he's way bigger than you. He's bigger than me? Oh, yeah. He'll kick Dave's your ass. Yeah. Careful. Yeah. Dude, he's I... got a coconut, too. Don't let him headbutt you. He'll hurt <laughs> you bad. <laughs> <laughs> they don't screw around in Jersey. Apparently not. I, I hope you know that. They plant petunias. Punch first, talk later. <laughs> so who are you looking to, uh, forward to the most here tonight, Jimmy? you looking forward to, uh, to JT Kenny or Brandon Palinick? I like them both, but JT is a blast, so... He's crazy. I'm looking forward to him. Yeah. He's I, I, a loose cannon. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. So That's exactly right. Just like you, Jim. Just like you. No, come on. I'm calm as a bomb. <laughs> Just as like a... anyone else with long hair. <laughs> calm as a bomb. Yeah. Remember when JT thought yeah. I was a cop? Yeah, JT did think you were a cop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he did. That was awesome. <laughs> JT thought Pat was a cop? No, hell no. I thought no. JP was a cop. I'd be undercover if I was a cop. I, I looked a lot. I had yeah, a mustache. No. Was, that's more of a bounty hunter. <laughs> There's no doubt. Jimmy, dude, it's good to hear from you, man. And uh, we look forward to seeing you. Uh, when is that? End of July? July 21st, I think. Yeah. The so, Ike Foundation um, event. Uh, IkeFoundation.com. You can go there. Uh, and you got a chance to fish with some amazing professional bass anglers this year. I mean, there's going to be a ton of sticks there. I think uh, Grig- yeah, Grigsby's yeah, going to be there. Gary Klein's going to be there. Uh, uh, Chris Grow. Uh, who else is going to be there? Do we know? You got Aaron Martins. Aaron, Aaron Martins. Martins is going to be there. John Cruz. John Cruz. Um, trying to think of who else. Chocked uh, full really of bass. It's a strong lineup this year. A lot better than last year. Super strong. IkeFoundation.com. Thanks, Jimmy. It's good to hear from you, guy. Good talking to you. We'll tip a few when you get here. <laughs> you got it, bud. Take care. That's Jim Fish 3 right there on Straight Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. He's from Jersey, in case you guys didn't know. How we doing over there? We getting Brandon? Look, this could be happening. The moment you have been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, my friend and yours, the one and only, Brandon Palinick. What's up? What's up, dude? Oh, my. Hold on, where are my headphones at? Ah, there, there you are. What's going on? Nothing, man. You're, you're back from Alaska. Yeah, I am. Yeah, how, how are you? Uh, I'm doing good. <laughs> what are you fidgeting with right now? He's putting his headset on, so you can probably hear me better. Nice. Yeah, you're probably the most efficient Skyper that ever comes on this show. Do you know that? Why is that? Well, you're just very efficient at Skyping. Like some Very guy fishing at Skyping. You I, first try. My problem is I just lost one of my uh, your buds. I lost one of my little ear pieces. Uh oh. Oh, that's and gonna hurt. Doesn't fit in my ear nearly as well. I won't yell can, at you. I promise. Can you hear me better? I can hear you great. Can you hear good. me? Yeah, I can hear you great, and I can hear you better now. Wow, that's outstanding. Ooh, the sound quality is now. is immensely perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I went for the headphones. <laughs> Give me an internet high five, B. Haven't seen you in a while. Boom. Right there. Right there, dude. So I think it's pretty cool that 
you got to go on a sabbatical to Alaska. Like, yeah. I've not, I mean, I know Alaska is not out of the country, but it sure as hell might as well be. You know what I mean? It's like, I've been to Jamaica and Mexico, but never. Yeah. I mean, you have to go over another country to get to it. So it's kind of like going to another country. Sure. And I mean, dude, it's just like, it, it is God's country. Is it not? Is it just epic? Yeah, that's the first time I've ever been there. And it, it's pretty awesome. What did you it's do? Definite. We literally just fished for two days. It was a super quick trip for me. Uh, so we literally just spent two days fishing up there. My buddy's a guide up there and works for Horizon Horizon West Guides. Uh, so he's a charter captain up there. Nice. And, and, and so, and it's actually his bachelor party. So it worked out great. He was up there getting ready for work and everything. So we just did it up there, fished for a couple of days, and uh, flew back down this morning. An Alaskan bachelor party. What were you guys yeah. catching? That's crazy. What'd you catch? Uh, we caught halibut. We caught ling. Caught a couple coho salmon. Caught some rock bass. Um. Dude, that ling cod was as big as you. It was. Dude, it was crazy. It had some gnarly teeth on it, too. Did you catch it on a DSR? <laughs> no, I did not catch that on a DSR. <laughs> Could you imagine if you did? Uh, I, ooh. I mean, you probably It'd still be could, there. But it's going to take a while. <laughs> you have to battle them down like the old Jerry McInnes films. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it's going to take you a Take you a hot minute to get that one dialed in. Like when Jerry went to Alaska and was catching giant trout on his on his five foot two eagle claw glass spinning rod with three yes. pound line on a hair jig, back reeling yes. for days. He got a whole yes. episode out of one giant trout. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's how damn good Jerry McInnes is. You know that to yeah, be true. One fish right. episode. Dude, what I haven't. Guys up? What are you guys up to? Dude, I'm just screwing around. Fishing. Yeah, yeah. Like, like normal. You know me. It's I'm just screwing around. Yeah, it's all fun and games. I haven't talked to you in a long time. You know, know it's been really long. I tried to talk to you at the classic, but you were you were busy signing boobies and kissing babies. So <laughs> I, I, I was kind I was trying to get I was trying to get over there to you, but you were super busy, which is understandable. Actually, actually, actually I just got to fish the whole time. I didn't have to work the expo. So <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome for sure. And and those and if you noticed you were missing seven alpha angler rods, it's because I I was the one that took them from your boat in the boat yard. Yeah, so that was me disappeared out of the booth they were out i got the brandon signature series ones they were there yeah. but dude it, it seriously is good to see you again and we have not talked for a while and i'd like to i'd kind of like to talk to you um about your your speech at the classic and i mean this sincerely one of the best speeches i have ever heard in bass fishing thank you dude it was so great it it really was and and I mean, and a lot of people keyed in on, on certain things of it. And I'm just going to mm-hmm. tell you a couple points that, that I keyed in on. Yeah. First of all, I am so glad that Plan A worked for you. <laughs> so glad that Plan A worked for you, dude. Me too. Yeah, because God knows what the hell you'd be doing with a Plan B right now. I'd probably be miserable. Probably yeah. not going I'd... to Alaska. You know what I mean? No. You know I'd... what I'm saying? Heck, I might be working up there. You might be on the rigs up there, dude. You yeah. might be on the crab boat. Be filleting salmon. <laughs> Second of all, how cool is it that you fulfilled the prophecy of yourself as an eight-year-old child to the Brandon Palinick that you have become today, dude? Uh, it's it's crazy, cool. yeah, it, dude. Yeah, think about it. it. It's a daily work in progress. Yeah, but man, but but it's, you, it's pretty cool. You are a success story. You you really are. Um, th- the fact of the matter is, you've wanted to do this your whole life. Yeah, um, it came to fruition. You were able to do it through hard work and dedication. And you talked about inspiring people, dude. Yeah, that's strong. Do you, do you, I don't yeah. even think that you realize how many people you've inspired. Probably not. No. I don't really feel like for me for me there's not like a number of oh I need to inspire a hundred or a thousand people or ten thousand people. 
for me to feel good about it. Like literally if I inspired one person to go do something, it doesn't have to be fishing, but just something, then I'm happy. Dude, and and, and that that again is it's that is very strong. That's all it yeah. takes. If you can if, if there's just one person you can reach, then the, the mission is accomplished. And I want to tell yep. you how you inspired me. Okay. All right. I'll so hear this. I, it was, let's go back. It, it was a couple of years ago and, and I was having just a horse shit day. Okay. I was at the old country buffet in front of this big fat gal and she wouldn't let me at the food. And I was having a horrible day. And I was like, what the heck is going on here? And my phone rings and who is it? But you uh-huh. BMP Brandon Palinick. And, and you said, Pat, this just isn't working out. I am going to have to let you go as my manager. Uh, I'm going to have to let you go. Um, I need to win Angler of the Year. I yeah. need to focus on my plan A. And you're just not cutting it as a manager. And then you said to me, Pat, what I need you to do, since I am setting you free like a little bird, you need to become a bass fishing talk show host and host <laughs> the number three bass fishing talk show on the web. <laughs> and and lo number and behold, number three? Ho, lo and behold, here I am with the number three bass fishing talk show on the web, and it's all because of you, Brandon Palinick. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Brandon. And because of this pen. Yes, the lucky naked lady pen. I would say that you also inspired him to get a spinning rod. He did, actually. That <laughs> is got a true one. story. And then I just broke it at St. Clair. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I broke my wrench. I was so pissed off. The first day I was there. I don't know. You're not supposed to step on them. I didn't step on it. (laughs) Something happened. I'm supposed to slam in the car door. No. No. It was a freak thing. Don't bounce them around in the waves. It was a freak thing. I I asked Boomer. He knows. I I, I was boat flipping a two-pound largemouth. A largemouth of all things on St. Clair. That's probably where it went wrong. The, exactly. First off, <laughs> that like Pat Renwick, you shall not be fishing for largemouth bass on St. Clair. Tonk, yes. Boom, it, and it was done. That was the fish gods telling it, you it was to crazy. not do that. But anymore. I did catch a six-pound largemouth on St. Clair, which was pretty awesome. I don't care how you look at it; it's a it's a big bass. But the the deal is, you 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 truly did inspire me um, to use a spinning rod too. Truth of the matter. You told me before, dude, you get, need to get that Neko rig or whatever the hell you call it, that Nico rig, and yep. it, it works, dude. It works. Let's get back to the speech. We're way off track here. All right. So what I want to ask you about is you said something in your speech about sometimes we find ourselves going through the motion. You were referring to the, I don't know if it was the the first day of the Classic or the, the day prior to the Classic, that professional anglers find themselves going through the motion and yep. and you said as we should be what what does that mean what does that mean in that instance uh, i was directly referring to the media day gotcha gotcha so during media day right you're fishing the largest tournament of your life yes to compete at that level you have to be so focused that some of the things, like some parts of your brain, kick into idle. And you still do the job that you need to do, and you do it to the best of your ability. But in that instance, I feel like, for me, when I'm out there and I'm in my boat and I'm doing interviews, the whole time I'm doing interviews, I'm engaged in the conversation and with the people, but my mind is still thinking fishing right because i'm talking about fishing i'm talking about the classic sure and the whole time i'm like running through game plans what did i find in practice and and a lot of that stems from because most of the questions that you get the interview questions are based around the classic and the fishing and so for me i feel like if you're going to compete you should be so focused that in that instance Essentially, like going through the motions. If I gotcha. you're going through the motions on the water, you're in trouble. Never work, never work out. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Yep. Um, also, something that that you said too that I'd like a an explanation for, which I thought was an amazing statement um, of 
that was not only a real statement, but it was a very secure statement. And you said that you know that that you you have a thought if you're going to catch him or you're not going to catch him, and you're mm-hmm. right a hundred percent of the time. Yep, dude, that's that's uh, that's so real, isn't it? A hundred percent. It's crazy. But when, the the tricky part is is that you don't know how to control that, or I don't know how to control which side of that it goes to. Like, I don't know how to wake up in the morning and feel like I'm going to catch him versus wake up and feel like I'm not going to catch him. Like, I don't know what the formula is one way or the other. It, that's Rick Clun shit right there. You that, know that, right? It really is. <laughs> I'm being serious. The, yeah. We had, we had Rick Clun on not too long ago, and in the interview, he told us, that he would see the fish he was going to catch the night prior to the tournament. And he was de- yep. deadpan serious, dude. And yeah. he said he had to finally quit doing it because there was not a medium. There was not a happy medium. It was amazing yeah. to hear an angler like Rick Clun talk about it. And it really reminded me, in essence, of your, your speech, your, your AOI speech at the Classic. It was very shockingly similar. Um, pretty I'll cool. I'll take that. Yeah, for sure, dude. That's a, yeah. that's that is an extreme compliment. And yeah, in the spare time that you don't have, go back and and watch the the Rick Clun interview on Straight Cast, yeah. and I think you'll be like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, I see what's yeah. going on there. I see what's going on there. So, dude, again, amazing. Uh, congratulations again on the on the AOY. It's brought you to a crazy year um yeah it's non-stop it is a grind 100 percent of the time it's a grind yeah. constantly you get a few days off in alaska and then now you're doing a stupid bass fishing talk show and you're right back to the grind okay is is it affecting your angling at all this year um i don't know i wouldn't say that that part of it is affecting it I honestly do think, though, like looking back at it now, uh, I fished more in the off season before 2017 than I had probably in like the years prior, and definitely more than this year. This year, I only fished four days between AOI and Lake Martin. Wow! Wow! Uh, so, I mean, I. I don't know if that is a, a factor or not, but just looking at it from like a mathematical standpoint, that is a, a difference maker. Gotcha. It kept the coals burning, maybe. Yeah, I, and I think it just it keeps your mind, um, your mind, your mind fresh on like finding fish and what they're doing, mm-hmm. even though mm-hmm. like when the elites come around, that you're not actually fishing those ways. But I was fishing tournaments at home with my buddies. And, like, I think there's a really big difference in guys that, like, just truly enjoy being out there and fishing and the guys that are, like, just fishing for a living. Uh, And when you're, like, when you desire to go out there, it's a big difference than when you feel like you just have to go out there. And so, like, when you want to spend every day on the water – that's when you're making the best decisions and performing the best. It's amazing how, how that happens too. It's practice. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I can relate, like I spent the last five days fishing and, mm-hmm. and, and it's like, but just by, whereas maybe I'll only spend three days a week fishing, but, but th- I was able to basically fish for five days in a row. And then the week yep. before that, I think I fished five days in a row. So that's a lot of days out of, you know, and you can tell, the way that you, for lack of a better way to put it, it's, you start to think like a fish a little bit, mm-hmm. you know yeah. I mean? Because you're drawing on all these experiences, whether they're yeah. old experiences or, or, or new experiences that are going exactly. on. It, it, yeah. It, that's, I mean, that's the way to do it. So yeah, I don't, I don't think it really matters, you know, whether you're fishing in the same conditions or not. I mean, look, look at a baseball player. He still takes batting practice in the cage every day, even though he's facing a different pitcher. It's just practice, it's repetition, you know. Yep. Setting the hook, making a cast. Kaboom. I yeah. agree. It's just and having the confidence in those. Right. 
is a big deal. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Hey, um, have you uh, have you been able to take any exotic vacations, like to the Amazon or anything like that? Nope. Uh, a few years ago, went to China, which like the city of Shanghai is kind of exotic. Yeah, it's got a lot of people. I've seen the movies. A lot of people. Yeah. Um, we went there. There's monkeys that steal shit from ago. you in Shanghai. I didn't have that happen, but I believe it. Yeah, it's true. And then this year, this year, me and Tiff are supposed to go to Thailand. Nice. That's where the monkeys are. Thailand from the mm. Hangover movie. That's be watch out for those little monkeys. Yeah, you better protect. I'll take your Tiff. wallet. Yeah, you gotta watch that. Yeah, I can see you going fishing for snakeheads or peacocks. Yeah. I mean, I know there's yeah. snakeheads in Thailand, not peacocks in Thailand, but there's yeah. snakeheads there. That, yeah. That would be amazing. Which is actually a pretty cool fish to catch. I, I love snakeheads. They're, they're just not good to be like in the Potomac and stuff. But <laughs> right, yeah, they're fun to catch. But like when I go to Florida, I love to catch those snakeheads like on a toad or a frog or something. Yeah. Dude, it's like a log just coming in and then it just blows up like somebody threw a bowling ball in the water. Yeah, kapow. Exactly. And come on, a six pound, seven pound peacock. Even though we're in America catching catching them that size, it's outstanding. Yeah. That's what you got to do. I've still never, I've never caught a peacock. Dude, you can go. I will hook you up with my cousins. They live in South Florida. They're big Brandon Palahniuk fans. Okay. You, <laughs> the, in, in Boca Raton. My, everybody always makes fun of me here. My producer's making fun of me right Did now. Did you live in Boca Raton? I lived in Boca Raton, Florida for 10 years. <laughs> so I'm going to hook you up with my cousins. Go down there and do one of your YouTube deals and catch uh-huh. some peacock bass. You can get the Grand Slam, Brandon. You know what the Grand Slam in South Florida is in freshwater? Does it include an anaconda? Uh, no, that's a different movie coming up later, star- oh. starring Ish Monroe. But we'll we'll talk about that later. But so here, here, <laughs> but the the Grand Slam in freshwater in in Florida is peacock bass, snakehead, yeah. snook, tarpon, and largemouth bass, all freshwater. Dang. Could you imagine getting that on film? That'd be impressive, dude. That's the deal. Does it does it have to be done? Oh, excuse me, does it have to be done all in one day? Am I boring the hell out of you already in this interview? <laughs> <laughs> you just got back from Alaska. <laughs> you get back from Alaska or something? The whole time zones between like going from <laughs> Texas to Alaska, staying up till eleven thirty at night in Alaska, which is like two thirty in Texas. <laughs> Holy cow! Does it, it does it get dark in Alaska? Because when it gets dark, vampires come out in Alaska, don't they? Four hours. It was literally, no joke, it was still light at 11.30 when we'd go to bed, and it was light at 4.30 when we got up in the morning. Gosh, that is crazy. Hey, you want to take a couple phone calls here? Sure. All right, you can call us up right now at 520-214-2277 and talk to the 2017 Bass Angler of the Year, Brandon Palahniuk, right here on Stray Cast. Uh, load them up, 520-214-2277. 77 BASS. If you want to get smart about it, that's the number. (laughs) It's right there. How we are we getting some calls? Kabing Kachang, I got the signal. Oh, I I hear I think we have a fish on the line. Something is ringing. Hi, you're on the air, Stray Cass. Who's calling? Hey, this is Rob Recker from Virginia. Hey, Rob from Virginia. You're on with uh, Brandon Palinick. You ever hear of him? No, I never have. No, I, I heard he's all right at bass fishing. He catches a few he sometimes. Some. Yes. L- Lingcod. He's a hell of a Lingcod angler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's what going on, that? Rob? What's going on? Do you want? You got a question yeah. for Brandon? Yeah, does he get a question? Oh, yeah, I'm you sorry. just, just yeah. hang out so, and listen? Uh, <laughs> I, I was wondering how he fishes he the Nico for that. or the Neko rig. A lot of people talk about how to rig it, but nobody really talks about how they like to fish it. Ooh, yeah. that's a good question. But first of all, it's called the Nebo rig. That's Chris and Trait Zaldane's <laughs> dog. So it's called the Nebo rig <laughs> is the correct way to pronounce it. Brandon, you want to take it from there and tell him how to fish Nebo? I, I can't hear. I couldn't hear his question. Oh, God, I can't hear him again. talking. Oh, wow. Okay. Hold on. You want to, you want to try it again? Sure. Try it one more time here. Can you hear me now, Brandon? 
not oh, hearing nothing. nothing. Okay, gotcha. Well, what he asked is a lot of you hear a lot of people talk about the the Neko rig and how to rig it, but a lot of people don't talk about how to fish it. So, gotcha. how do you fish it, Brandon? Uh, a lot of that's going to depend on the cover that I'm fishing around. Uh, we'll just use Sam Rayburn as an example because I threw it last year when I won there. You did. Uh, so what I was doing is I was doing one of two things. Uh, I was fishing around standing timber and a lot of suspended fish. And I would actually see the fish on my Humminbird 360 around the trees. And I would pitch it right up against the trees and let it kind of fall down right next to the trees that the fish were suspended around and they would follow it down and then I would shake it on the bottom and not really pulling it towards me a lot. And then the other way that I was fishing it was around brush piles and I'd actually cast, you know, to the side or past the brush pile and I would drag it into the brush pile and actually just work it through those brush piles. I throw a VMC weedless Nico hook so that I'm able to kind of work it through those brush piles, just like you would a football jig uh, or like a, a big 10 inch worm work it very similar to that. But as I get up to that brush pile, I'll kind of shake my rod tip a little bit because that's causing that bait to do that little number right there. I don't know what you want to call that. The quiver. It's called the undulation. It's, doing. it's called the undulation. Yes. yes. Gets the flux capacitor just right. <laughs> it, just it puts the wang dang in the doodle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yep. right there. Well, there it yeah, is. That. Cowboys, yeah. <laughs> a down to the T explanation of how to fish a nickel rig. Thanks for calling, man. That's awesome, man. Appreciate it. There it is, right there. Brandon Palinick. I'm... Jenga. <laughs> Django. Jenga. You ever played Jenga? Yeah. I like that game. I like Giant Jenga. You ever played? Too, yeah, I played Giant Jenga too. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> scary. You get hurt playing that You game. can get hurt yeah. doing it. Yeah, especially Don't... if you're. Wear shoes. Yeah, the problem is, is that when I play Giant Jenga, it doesn't take very long before the Giant Jenga tower gets taller than I am. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the heights is bad. I have the same problem, Brandon. Don't worry. Yeah. We're, we're about the same height. Hey, uh, you're you're doing good on MLF, dude. I can't really talk about it. <laughs> you fish a swim jig a lot on MLF, Brandon. The current the last. One. Last year, I threw a swim jig for about four months straight between elites and MLF and just about everywhere I went. The time of year that we went and I guess the places that we went, it just worked. Uh, a lot of places around the country had high water, so there were a lot of fish suspended around bushes and stuff. And so I just I put it in my hand and it seemed like I could cover water with it and get bit in a lot of places that we went. I don't think that I have weighed a bass. I don't even know if I've caught a bass on a white swim jig this year yet. Really? Yeah. And that and and you were throwing like I noticed you were throwing three eighths, and a lot of people throw quarters, or a lot of people throw halves, and you kind of went in the happy medium, didn't you? Yeah, you know, I just like why well, have both if you just put it right in the middle? <laughs> three eighths. <laughs> you <laughs> complicated. Exactly. And and how more simpler than a white swim jig? Yeah, it's pretty simple. What what were you th throwing that zoom craw behind it? I was throwing a zoom super speed craw, throwing it on uh, actually fluorocarbon. I like kind of I like the little delay and the pop that it has with fluorocarbon versus. I, I agree. Uh, mm -hmm. Great. So I throw it on twenty pound Seaguar and Vizx, and then throwing it on the uh, Alpha Angler Zilla. On the Zilla, the Zilla is is is, is so amazingly versatile. Seriously, yes. It, it's it, it's. I mean, and again, I'm you know obviously we're both sponsored by Alpha Angler, but the Zilla is probably one of the most special rods in the line. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as versatility, dude, it's an amazing swing head rod. It's an amazing. Yeah. It's an amazing swim jig rod. It's a hell of a jig rod. Um, yeah, dude, you could throw small swim baits on the thing. Everything. Yeah, I do. A lot. I, I know. It's like the number one, just do everything perfect. Got to have it in your boat. Put it in your hand rod. It, it, it's amazing. And and Boomer was right. He's like, Pat, you're going to you're gonna order yourself one Zilla. He's like a crack dealer, Boomer was. <laughs> Give you a taste. Yeah. Here, here, here's one Zilla. Here's one Zilla. And then the next thing you know, you're hanging out on the corner looking for more Zillas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> 
I gotta ask you about the rebound. Brandon, I gotta I gotta ask you about that rebound. Ryan um, sleeps with his rebound. I do. Actually. I do. True story. Uh, and my Alpha Angler rebound too. He cuddles um, with it. Yeah, no, what I've been throwing the uh the chatterbait on it a lot and square bills. Uh-huh. What what do you throw on that thing? That's pretty much my two, like square bills. I mean, I throw square bills so like on the regular rebound i'll throw yeah. everything up to like a dt10 okay uh you know so a lot of like dt6s kind of that six to ten foot diver square bills and then i really like it um for chatterbaits bladed jig type stuff oh yeah works it's, really well yeah. um, you seem you seem to be able to hammer them you hook them better i feel like and you don't you just seem to land way more, um, and you'd think like that it it wouldn't have the power to get a hook set in them. But I mean, I I made quite a bit of money last year throwing a bladed jig on a rebound, and was thoroughly impressed. With, yeah, uh, you know what what it can do with a bladed jig. It for choke sure. it. It gives them that little I had bit the, of time. Yeah, I had the same problem at first. I was like, I don't know if it's got the power, but it was just like a, a little bit of a learning curve where it's a slow power. You know, the the power yeah. is delayed. You kind of got to wait to swing. I would swing a little early sometimes and then lose all that all that power in the bend, but, but I you can just wait a little it, bit. You can't do it with ev- like just any glass rod, though. Right. Because most glass rods are too dead feeling in your hand. They're like mm-hmm. buggy whips. You can't feel the blade and you can't feel the grass and everything. And I, like I, I feel like I can actually feel more grass and feel the bait better with that than I can a lot of, uh, like, graphite rods. Right. Agreed. JP said he could feel the fish swimming behind his chatterbait. JP's a, as a fish whisperer, though. <laughs> he, he can't. Hey. I call it the PPP, the Progressive the P-P-P. Parabolic Performance. Have you, yes. have you got on the talk with Jake about how the chatterbait blade folds and the rebound pulls the hook? Versus a no. graphite rod snapping the blade. A hundred percent. Yeah. One yet? I have not heard this. Uh, yeah. It, so it, I wish, I wish I had a chatterbait sitting here. Actually, I do. This is a. <laughs> oh, here's one right here. I just like randomly, just like oh, we're talking about chatterbaits. I just randomly just have happened to have Japanese. one, and this is not set up. <laughs> this is the magic of a bass fishing talk show. It was right literally here. just like I, was, I mean, I haven't been home since January, so it's. Not like it's set up. I didn't even know we were going to be talking about it. Is that a jackhammer? Happened to happen. No, no. This is something else. So <laughs> when a fish eats it, it folds up, right? Yes. Okay. So it, it folds. Psh, hook folds. Now, if you have a... When the blade's like this, there's my... It blocks the hook. Correct. Okay. Really hard to hook them like that. So if you have a graphite rod, when you set the hook, this blade, the first thing that happens is this blade snaps up and then pulls through their mouth and has to and then has to fold back to hook them. Right. Versus a rebound, because it's delayed, it loads up and starts to drive the hook before because it doesn't it has that delay. So it starts to load and drive the hook before it actually snaps. Instead of just like snapping that blade forward, exactly. Hey, that, that chatterbait looked really cool. Can I have it? Nope. <laughs> he's Gotta not. Try. He's not having it. Hey y'all, what do you say we play some games? Are you ready? Yeah. Do you got, I got a piece of paper and a pen? Very good. Very good. You were a you. good student. Even, even a pen that you gave to me. Nice. You and James Watson are the only two guests on our show that have the official Pat Renwick Signature Series model Naked Lady Pen. That's true. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. the, that's the two of you right there. So this is a game called Match em Up, okay? okay. And I'm going to need you to write down these names. Now, what I did when we were at the Bassmaster Classic, I surveyed 32 anglers and got the most common answer, okay? Okay. So these are the names of the anglers I need you to write down. Jeff Crete. Justin Lucas. Do, do they need to be like straight down? No, dude, any... just so you can refer to them. This is purely so you can refer to these anglers. 
Okay. Okay. So we got Jeff Crete, Justin Lucas, Jake Boomer, Jordan Lee, Ishmon Rowe, and Fletcher Shryock. Jordan Lee, Ishmon Rowe. And Fletcher. Yeah, so you got Fletch, Lucas, Crete, Ish, Boomer, and Lee. Okay. You ready to play? Match him up? Okay. Maestro, give me a beat. It's time for Match Him Up with 2017 Toyota Bass Angler of the Year, Brandon Palinick here on Stray Cast. I'm your host, Pat Renwick, and welcome to Match Em Up. You got to dance a little, Solid. Brandon. Dance a little. Solid. Dance. Solid. You got to dance. Solid. Get excited. You're on a game Solid. show, dude. Oh, You're on a game show. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. There it is right yeah. there. That's how you game show. Right there. <laughs> Match Em Up. Brandon, as I told you, we surveyed 32 bass fishing professionals, and these are the most common answers. I need you to match them up with the correct angler. Okay. Are you ready? Hit me with it. Went from a face full of dirt to a fist full of bass. Match him up. Went from a face full of dirt. Okay, do I just, how do I like label it? Just pick your angler. Pick which angler no, that matches your, up with. Say your answer. So I'm just, I'm just. You just tell me. You say out. your answer. Nah. Fletcher Shryock. Fletcher Shyrock is the correct answer. Yes. Good job. Good job. In 2000, Nailed it. I'm gonna give a circle to that one. Yep, that one's because out. of the motocross, that's, right? That's correct. Because of his there motocross savvy. In 2017, this angler got a tramp stamp tattoo that reads, "Limits are for sissies." Limits are for sissies. <laughs> what? Which angler got a tramp stamp tattoo in 2017 that said, "Limits are for sissies"? Jordan Lee. Jordan Lee is the correct answer. <laughs> Did you know that about him? Learn all kinds of things here, don't you? May have been there. I don't know. (laughs) It was a drunken night in Thailand, apparently, (laughs) after he won the Classic. (laughs) It is said that this angler has the ability to immobilize deadly rattlesnakes with a spit of chew tobacco. I mean, the only one I can think of for that's Crete. That's Jeff Crete. You are bad enough that you are so good at this. You're way better than Hackney at this. You're you're so good at this. Damn. He won. Right. He won the inaugural Elite Series event by tempting big females with his oversized tube. <laughs> Ish Monroe. Ish Monroe is the correct answer. Yes. He is knocking it out. A tiger tube. He is knocking it out. That is amazing. Well asked question. Thank you very much. (laughs) His balance point rivals that of a delicate gymnast. Jake Boomer. Jake Boomer is the correct answer. My God, you are amazing at this. We have one more question. Ah, I'm thinking he's going to get it right. This is the bonus round. You win. (laughs) If you get this right, you're going to win an Alpha Angler Pat Renwick Signature Series 8-foot flip stick. Are you ready? All you got to do is get this question right, Brandon. He is known as the Gandalf of Gunnersville. I think the answer is obvious. There's only one left. Justin Lucas. Justin Lucas. He's a wizard. He's like Gandalf. Congratulations, Brandon Palinick, 100%. He batted 1,000. You win a Pat Remwick Signature Series Alpha Angler Thor's Hammer 8-foot flip stick. That is the first 100%. Good job. Good job, Brandon. Thank you. I'm super proud of you. Thank you. You're not, Appreciate you're, it. You are knocking it out. Brandon, Um, again, thank you so much for taking your time to come on this show here, dude. Um, yep. after, after your, your sabbatical in Alaska. I mean, boom, straight from the plane, back to your Idaho home. He's not from Indiana. He's not from Ohio. He's from Idaho. He's Brandon Palinick. Thank you so much, dude. Yes, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Always good times. Yeah, dude. And and we appreciate your support throughout the years. I mean, since day one, dude. Since day Always. one. Since hanging out at the little uh, BP station in St. Clair, where we used to hang out. Yep. Way back On in the, the day. I bought you a Slurpee. I yep. remember. <laughs> 
<laughs> Whatever, dude. Hey, um, g- you. dude, you got you got a, you got a strong season coming up. The rest of it is in your wheelhouse. You know that, right? Yeah, I mean, kind of. Yeah, dude, that Hawaii lake. Sabine she- River. Sabine River is not really considered my wheelhouse. Yeah, but that Hawaii lake is coming up. Hawaii. Yeah, the Hawaii lake. Oahuaho. <laughs> lake Hawaii. Yeah. Oahua. Yeah, it'll be good. Never been there, but dude, I hear it's amazing. Good. Yeah, there's no cell service. There's no trees. <laughs> um, and there are no calm days, so it'd be good. <laughs> it should be. It should be interesting. Brandon, safe travels. Best of luck to you uh, in the remainder of the the 2018 season, dude. Thanks again. Thanks, man. Appreciate that it. is Brandon Palinick right there. Hey, put the power poles down. Don't go anywhere. When we get back, it's the Kenny Powers of bass fishing. JT Kenny, right here on Straight Cast. stops your boat faster and holds it more securely than power pole shallow water anchors some folks hear power pole and think oh man i can't afford that but did you know you can get the eight foot power pole sportsman 2 hydraulic anchor now with sea monster 2.0 pump and heavy duty hydraulic hose for just 1295 dollars it's got all the features power pole anchors are famous for and a single sportsman 2 will hold a bass boat up to 4500 pounds go check it out at power-pole.com to find a dealer near you power pole swift Silent, secure. The swim jig technique is one of the most successful ways to put fish in the boat. Time in and time out, Bravani Bait swim jigs are just the right tool for the job. Beaming with quality, the Bravani swim jigs come in a myriad of colors, feature the best premium hooks and solid trailer keepers to give you, the serious bass angler, the confidence you need to accomplish your goal of putting more fish in the boat. So go to BravaniBaits.com and start climbing the ladder to swim jig success. Rageous Outdoors is quickly becoming the industry leader in tournament fishing apparel. There's no better way to represent your sponsors than with a Rageous jersey. At Rageous, you can get a short sleeve, long sleeve, sweatpants, the best prices in the industry. Rageous also offers club and team discounts, special high school and college prices. Our website is easy to navigate, and Rageous' staff will make the process quick and easy for you. Rageous Outdoors, offering high-quality tournament apparel for the weekend angler. Outfit yourself from head to toe. Check out Rageous online at www.rageous.com. Oh, yes. Welcome back. Welcome back to Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. Uh, I'm your host, Pat Renwick. And right now, um, we are pretty excited to welcome back to the glorified version of a bass fishing talk show. He's the Kenny Powers of bass fishing. Voted the sexiest man in bass fishing by James Watson. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you JT Kenny right here, right now. Yes. Yeah, I didn't really have to put it off. Didn't have to that. It, was just, it just kind of happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got in trouble for that kind of action, but he just went ahead and did it. That's James Watson. <laughs> There's no control in that beast. Right. <laughs> What's up, dude? It's good to see you, man. Yeah, definitely. Just finally here at home, believe it or not, after being, it seems like being on the road forever, but. We're home now, and I uh, actually got to do a little fishing around home today and busted their ass pretty good today. That was kind of fun this morning, and then got some stuff done in the afternoon, and it was a pretty good day. Nice. Are you wearing sunglasses? I am not. I'm, oh. not, on my, I'm not on my lanai. You got so you got in a bar fight? Oh, there you are. Now I can it's see just, you. It's just a tan line. Oh, it was, it was a reflection. Oh, there it is. <laughs> is that close? <laughs> you look good, man. That look good. <laughs> it's eyeballing you, <laughs> dude, man. Uh, I, when was when did we see each other last? It was at the uh, the BMC, right? The, at what the, was that? We when did we see each other last? Was the Bassmaster Classic, right? I think yeah. When we were fooling around in the uh, in Ike and Ellie's Bass University, whatever whatever kind of crap he had going on at yeah. that time. Yeah, with Barry the Candlestick Maker. <laughs> yeah. 
that guy. Yeah, that guy. That, that guy. guy. <laughs> that guy right there. <laughs> so, uh, dude, I mean, you've been uh, you've been all over. Uh, th- the word is out. The jig is up. The news is out that you are now an MLF competitor. Yeah, it's pretty freaking cool, yeah. dude. Yeah, and it really is. And you know, I, I've fished, I've fished BASS, I've fished FLW, I have fished, you know, the Federation when it was the BASS Federation. I fished it when it was the FLW owned the Federation, and I fished MLF, and it it was it was a pretty cool deal. I mean, it really was. It was uh, just a whole different. It was like I had the same office. <laughs> but or no, no no let me rephrase that it was same career but a different office <laughs> I love it, was, it. it really was it was cool because like my job was still to catch bass but yeah it wasn't like trying to find the five biggest ones i catch a lot you know, of them. it was like you know you try to catch as many as you possibly can so it, i mean it really was dude it was cool I mean, a whole different ball game. And did did it change your approach? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it did because it was like there's no more of this going out idling around trying to find you know this a big mega school off the bank or anything. It was like, you know, you got. I mean, you basically still have a tournament day, but it gets it gets broke up into you know a couple of different, you know, there's three different periods. So like you you you. Get a ride through. You start. You you, you pick an area that, that that looks good, and by the time you invest, you know, an hour or so. I mean, you got to fish a place for an hour before you know a, a big area. You got to fish it for an hour before you can make a true decision on whether that's really what you need to be doing or not. Well, then you only got like another forty five minutes, and you got to be back at the rendezvous point. Which the rendezvous? I don't get that. I don't know why they had to go French. With the whole- <laughs> <laughs> Where we're gonna back at the ramp? They could have. No, ju- it's the rendezvous. They're getting all chez les pantons, chez les pantons. That's what you said. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't know why they had to go there, but but literally, then you got to be back there, so you really don't have time to, you know, go someplace else, and then you know it, it, it it's it's very different. But I mean, I think I adapted to it pretty well. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> Is that a little foreshadowing right there? Not, not at all. Okay, that gotcha. Was, so even, there was not even an allegedly thrown in there or anything. <laughs> What's that? Everyone says the stress level is way higher. Is that is that true? Did that get to you too? He doesn't feel nope. stress. It's JT I Kenny said, Powers. A lot of guys said that they were really stressed out and everything, and uh, dude, I don't. Whatever. It's I'm JT just, Kenny, I'm, dude. What kind of question I, is that? I, it's freaking JT Kenny. That's why I asked him because everybody <laughs> else says they're stressed. I don't think the guy gets stressed. Me <laughs> out about you know other than maybe when the beer store is about to close, but I mean other than. <laughs> <laughs> so we know what happens on on Major League Fishing. We see part of it on television. So we see the drive to the lake. We see the angling. Yeah. Okay, what goes down after? the day of fishing. Do you guys chill out together or is it like go back to the hotel room? No, and- it really is. Yeah. Yeah. You go back to the hotel and everybody chills out. And, you know, obviously I've only been to one event so far, but you know, it's a whole week long thing. And, and uh, yeah, man, you know, that, that whole major league fishing community. I mean, it's like all the people that work there, the marshals, the production people, everybody like, yeah, pretty much you get back to the hotel, you do a few more interviews and then basically everybody goes down to the bar and has a couple of beers and, and orders something to eat. I mean, it, it, you know, and everybody kind of, you're not allowed to talk at any time about what happened during the day, but you can still, you know, talk about stuff. And yeah, everybody's like, it was like a big family. It was pretty cool. Well, yeah, that, cause you, you got, you got the guys for that are fishing the next day at the same location too, right? Oh, yeah. So you can't, oh. you can't say anything. They're all together like a happy family. No, it is, it is kind of weird. It is kind of weird when you bring, like, however many there is, 24, but there's quite a few eliminated after the first day. But when you bring that many guys together, that the common bond <laughs> is bass fishing. Yeah. And then you t- you can't talk about bass fishing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just talk about beer or what? Was Allie Acres there? 
there's a lot of hunting talk going on which you know me i'm an avid bow hunter so that was that was pretty cool and and there's a lot of times when guys will be like oh yeah and said yeah and eh, never mind like because everybody's <laughs> trying to be right you know what i mean everybody's trying to, to follow the rules and do the right thing and, right you know but it is, it is hard when you like and now I actually see like what a lot of those guys are talking about about when the when the elite series this year went to that like absolutely no information rule. Like it's hard to even talk about what you know what I mean. It's hard to talk about anything with anybody. So you, you don't that, know. It's like you got to be careful. Yeah, like that was the only thing I that that was weird about it. Everything else was was awesome. I mean, even even all the rules about how you can't flop a fish into the boat, can't touch the carpet, can't touch your clothing, you know, all that stuff. But but all that is is for the betterment of the sport. It's sure. for the long sport. It's for it's it's protecting the resource. And even though there may have been a few mess ups on my part, but <laughs> still those rules are for the betterment of the sport and I really like that. It's 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 a purest form of the sport. I agree with it. it Their slogan. Hundred percent. I mean, you use your electronics a little bit just to see how deep it is or whatever. But there's no more of that going out there idling around for eight or ten hours a day looking for the mega school. There's there's nothing. It's like that bank looks good. There's birds standing on it and there's wind blowing on it. And I'm just <laughs> right there. Let's go. There's no going down it and side scanning it and making sure there's bait and arches there. No, you go pick up your stuff and throw at it. <laughs> when you yeah. just fished this uh, this MLF event, was there any angler that you got to, to chill out with for the first time that you maybe not have had the chance in FLW or BASS Opens to hang out with before? Not really. Um, Fred Rambanis a little bit, old Boom Boom. But not re- I still knew him. You know, like, I do all the, the Bass Universities with, like, an Ellie and all that. So, you know, I, I know all these guys, even though, you know, I haven't fished Bass for a while. I've been fishing FLW most recently here. And, you know, but I still, I know all those guys through seminars and sports shows and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, not really. Like I said, other than hung out with, with Rambanis a little bit more than, than normal. But that was about it. Freddie's awesome. Now, did Yeah. 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 Say it is hyped. He's, he actually just built a barn dominium which is like a big pole building yeah i know dude stop and all that stuff that's what i guess i didn't even know this until fred told me and maybe fred's big time but <laughs> he told me it's called a barn dominium but i'm actually <laughs> building one of those too so we kind of had that in common and bounced a lot of ideas off each other and stuff so that's pretty cool <laughs> nice now did did you get to meet Allie Akers in person? Is she as hot in person as she is on TV? No, nah, not really. No? <laughs> she was yes. <laughs> you what? I did meet her. Yeah, I did a bunch of interviews with her. No, she's not really as hot as she is on TV. Gotcha. <laughs> Laying it on the line. You get the real story. Is Marty me. Stone's head as shiny in person as it is on TV? Could you see yourself in it? Yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's I don't think it's armor all. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's shiny, but I don't think it's actually armor all. I don't Slick know what mist. it is. It's it's some sort of product. Oh no, no, it's not it's not straight up human skin. No, no. <laughs> I, I can't put a figure on what it possibly could be. But I, it, it's actually kind of cool. Like 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 the dude owns that stuff, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like he's got it. Like, like he's like my forehead's shiny, and you like it. Yeah, and everybody, it, everybody does. Like the you're like awesome. <laughs> Marty Stone's awesome. It looks like he's from hey, the future. Hey Andy, I think I think we have a phone call. I think I think we we have hit, a. We're, hit we're, us with it. Hold, hold on a second here. Wait, wait hold on a second. Is it is it him? Is is it where is the where's I didn't hear the ringer. Where's the ringer? No, okay, wait now. Hold hold on a second, JT. Hold hold on. Close your eyes a second. Close your eyes. It's not gonna get weird. Close your eyes. I get really. Last time somebody said that, it got really weird. <laughs> JT. 
This is Marty Stone. I heard you were just talking about me on the Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television Show. You said I had well, a you said I had a shiny head. Well, Marty, that's because you have a really shiny forehead, so that's why I brought that up. Did you ever notice that they make me wear the dumbest Wiley X sunglasses whenever I do these interviews with you guys? They do not fit your face very well. JT, you like to flip. <laughs> That's a question. That was a question. That's how Marty. That's a Marty. St- question. Oh, sorry. Wait, I'm Marty Stone. I'm not Pat. <laughs> JT, you like to flip. Okay, I like to catch them whatever they're gonna bite on. <laughs> well, Marty, thank you for calling. Yes, and JT complimented <laughs> you. We appreciate the the phone call, Marty. Sometimes Marty's a good I friend of ours. Big fan. Of, big fan of the Straight Cash Show. Marty Stone is. So I was kind of. I've actually, I've actually Marty uh, is a financial advisor too and i've actually done some business with him so i may not want to piss him off yeah, nice don't, don't do that he has oh, access love marty. he has access to your accounts no marty's awesome he's awesome i have a couple of my passwords i might not want to <laughs> you don't mock anybody you don't like that's a rule <laughs> yeah, that is true that is true hey what What's is that? your what is your uh <laughs> what's that especially but it has access to your retirement. Yes. yes. Don't yes. mess with that whatsoever. Don't, don't talk about their shiny heads, people. That was a joke. <laughs> JT, you spend a lot of time on the road, dude. Um, all professional bass fishermen do. Uh, dur- oh, yeah. During the season, during the off season. What, what, is your, what is your guilty pleasure on the road? What is JT Kenny's guilty pleasure on the road? You know you know what? The only reason I feel like it's a guilty pleasure is because it's so damn expensive anymore. But, like, the only time that that I eat out or, like, really go out or stay in a hotel is, like, actual travel days. Like, all the tournament days, well, at, at MLF you stay in a hotel because they put you in a hotel, but... But like the FLW tour, or I fish the Southeast Coast, is you know whatever whatever I'm fishing, I usually room with Brian Thrift, and and we always try to rent houses, or you know we've both been doing it a long time. We know a lot of people around. We stay with somebody, and uh, but when I'm traveling, you know, the thing like living in Florida, the bad thing about it is like Florida's a long way from anywhere, and plus when I hit the Florida line. I'm still six or eight hours from my house because right. I live pretty far down in Florida. So typically most tournaments are a two day drive for me. So I will stop and I will get a hotel room and I usually try to find a hotel room that has like a Logan's Roadhouse or something <laughs> where I can go have a couple of beers. No, seriously, I go have a couple of beers, have me a good piece of meat, you know, and go to bed. And when what makes that a guilty pleasure for me? Is dude that costs two hundred dollars nowadays? <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does to get a to get a, a Hampton Inn is one hundred and twenty nine dollars a night, and walk across the street to Outback, and it's by the time you get a good steak and drink two big tall Miller Lights and tip the waitress, it's fifty dollars. Sure, like easy. I don't spend two hundred dollars the entire week I'm at a tournament because thrift brings me. I bring. <laughs> meat and you know i like to saltwater fish in the winter time when i'm at home so we bring a lot of stuff all we buy is vegetables and if we're staying with somebody they're not charging us anything to eat so like that's and i know like you probably wanted to say like i sneak off to strip clubs and stuff no no that's a guilty pleasure maybe 15 years ago it was but it's not anymore i wasn't looking so, for that i know but that's it's not so <laughs> i just that's it's almost like it it's almost like it made me mad like it's just all, all my good pleasure is is a good steak, two big tall Miller Lights, and a comfortable bed to lay in. And I'm mad because it cost me two hundred bucks. It is. <laughs> it's a sign of it's a sign of your age, JT. It means you're I maturing. Your mouth when you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the mature JT Kenny now on this show. <laughs> He's progressed. Instead of regressing, you're progressing. Yeah, I still like sweater meat, though. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. If you could pick any sponsor to have, no matter what in this whole wide world it was, fishing, non-fishing, anything, who would you pick as a sponsor, JT? I would say probably either Paramount Pictures or 20th Century Fox. And I don't remember actually who produced the movie, but I, and, and, and everything revolves, I want to take Jeff Bridges fishing. But yes. Not, yeah. wait, wait, wait for it, wait for it. But not Jeff Bridges as Jeff Bridges. He has to be in character as the dude on the Big Lebowski. Yes, the Big Lebowski. That's you need to so the, the dude fishing. The dude abides. The dude and the, it does. <laughs> and not on the Sabbath either. That's the day of rest. Summer Shabbos. Summer Shabbos. Summer Shabbos. Whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the dude in character. And I feel like if they were a sponsor of mine that I could probably get that done. You can make it happen. You need the Coen brothers to sponsor you. They'll get them. Yeah, dude, that would be an amazing trip. You and Jeff Bridges as the big Lebowski. That could be a motion picture. Yeah, I don't see see why it couldn't be. (laughs) Hello. Yeah, hell of a weather so <laughs> The Dude and JT's Excellent Adventure. Part two. Yeah. Part two. Dude. At the rendezvous get point. A little, get a little Go to the box. rendezvous point with the dude. Starts at the rendezvous point at the most recent MLF event. <laughs> little, little credence on the boat. Yes. <laughs> the white <laughs> Russians. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, you know those um in Florida in the canals? They got those little brown fish. They got crazy teeth. And I, I've been trying to think of what the name of these things are. They like to eat spinner baits. And they're, it's uh, not snakeheads, that, but they're like these brown fish. They kind of look like gobies, but they're bigger and they got teeth. You know what I'm talking about? They're, no, I don't think so. There's <laughs> there's cichlids and there's all kind of like that kind of stuff. But it's not it's not anywhere shaped like a bowfin or a yeah. snakehead or anything. No, like no, that. dude. It's like a. It looks like a big goby. It looks like a giant goby, and they're in a lot of the canals in South Florida, and they got they got teeth, dude. Like you can't lip them. And, I, I don't know. I think they're called like crazy, cre- crazy creepers or something. Jeeper, <laughs> jeeper creepers or something. I'm serious. Sure, sure my dog didn't design a bait after him. <laughs> a big, a big mouth creeper. The old swim bait. <laughs> Yeah, it could be like a crazy creeper swim bait or something. <laughs> I don't know. Let's let's trademark it right now. Now, he doesn't live in Michigan anymore. He moved down here. Who did? Joe Baylog. Oh yeah, he's he down by you. Small mouth guy. Yeah, of course. On uh, Erie and St. Clair and all that stuff. Sure. Yeah, he, he lives he by you. Oh, Florida. He couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, I know, dude. Winners suck. I'm not going to lie. They're horrible. You guys are in Indiana or something, right? Yeah, we're in Indiana. Right near Chicago. Yeah. it's just it, We're just south of the armpit of the nation right now. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> I look like, into a perspective like that that everyone can easily understand. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, a, I'm an idea man. I feed the mayonnaise to the tuna fish. You, I love it. Love you, it. You, you know that about me. So, uh, oh, yeah. Let's say that this is an appropriate time to play some games. You know we do that here. Appropriate time to be inappropriate, but go ahead. <laughs> it is a, well. That's what this whole game is about. Now, I'm sure you've I'm sure you've played just the tip before, haven't you? You've played yeah, that allegedly. Yeah, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly played. Well, this is a little game show that we have. It's called Just the Quick Tip. Okay. Just the Quick Tip. On Stray Cats. And we're going to give you, this time it's about bass fishing cover. I'm going to name the type of bass fishing cover, and you give us just the quick tip. And four. All right, are you ready? Ah, yes. It's time for just the quick tip with JT Kenny. 
MLF and FLW superstar. Just a quick tip. JT, rip rap. Just a quick tip. Uh, square bill crankbait. Square bill crankbait on the rip rap. Hydrilla. Hydrilla. Just a quick tip. Heavyweight. Scare them with your presentation. Heavyweight. Scare them with the presentation. Kick the door. Yeah, scare them and bite them. <laughs> scare them. Nothing bank. Nothing bank. <laughs> Go away. If <laughs> <laughs> um, there's nothing there, why are you going to fish it? Get out of there. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> spillway. The spillway. Ah, uh, current scene. Current Doesn't scene. Current scene. Doesn't there. matter what the bait is. Lay down. Just a quick tip. Uh something. <laughs> this goes with the quick tip really good. Something <laughs> soft. Something soft. Something soft. <laughs> Shouldn't it be something hard with the lay down? Yeah, something we- soft hard. right in the crotch. The, the, the crotch of the lay down would be a good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Where it goes. The shell bed. The shell bed. Be a dragger. Be a dragger. A dragger. Did he win? Did he win? Yes. You want a bottle of Cox juice? He- oh. <laughs> I already have some, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, special formula Cox juice. That's right. Do you guys know, do you really want to know that this will not be a quick tip? Do you really want to know why Cox juice actually works? Yes. Yep. I'm going to get, I'm going to get pretty technical on you. You think our, do you think the viewers are ready for this? I think they are. I don't care. So a fish smells and tastes through a whole bunch of wee little dots all around its lips and inside its mouth. It doesn't Same actually way. smell with its nose. So all those wee little dots, they're called like oral fractories or something. I don't know. This. Yeah. I'm not, I'm that was technical. sounded great. Yeah, I'm go with that. Powers. So I'm not that technical. But anything that's a petroleum-based, it, it won't get small enough to get down into those little oral factories to let them actually smell or taste it. And cock juice is the way I understand, not a petroleum based substance. So it actually works. Anything that you spray on the water and you can see like that rainbow colored sheen that it's a proven fact that fish can't actually smell that. So cock taste- juice is penetrable. Yeah. It, Cause it does, it, it beads. And it doesn't get small enough to go in the little holes for them to taste it. Nice. Gotcha. So, so that's that's why Cox juice is awesome. <laughs> wow. That was more than is just that, a tip. That's the tip of the week right there from JT Kenny for his buddy John Cox. That's good stuff. Right there. Congru- right. Good job. Cox is my buddy. He doesn't like Cox. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's outstanding, yeah. dude. That's smiling Johnny. He's always smiling for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's amazing. It he, is amazing how much Cox makes everybody happy. He he really does. He really does. does. There's no doubt. Hey, you're you're getting ready for St. Clair, dude. Are you excited about a little smallmouth fiesta? You know, I really am. Um, we're going out of the north end of St. Clair, and uh, I really, I, you know, I, I've had a lot of success up there in that area, but normally it's when we went out of Elizabeth Park, and we went, uh, I, I like to go to Lake Erie because Lake Erie just feels like more fishing to me. It feels, you know, there's there's rock piles and rock veins and reefs and, and, and like structure and cover to fish. You know what I mean? Like where St. Clair is just a big bowl. But with us going out of the north end of St. Clair, I mean, that's a long, long way to, to Lake Erie. So that's a journey. I, yeah. So I think I'm going to stay on St. Clair. Um you know, I'm just gonna have to go up and, and figure it out. I, I I would have liked to have went up and and I was actually planning on going up there and, and doing a little pre fishing, which I never do. Um, but I talked to a couple of guys that got up there a little bit before me, you know, because of that MLF event, 
and they said that they were all over the beds. So there's no sense in me going up there when they're all over the beds when three weeks from now they're not going to be. So right. I just elected that I came back home. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of, you know, I've kind of had a really up and down year on the FLW tour this year. You know, I've, I've made two cuts, um, you know, but, but, but I've had some really terrible finishes too. So, so I'm actually on the bubble. I'm the bubble guy for making the Forestwood Cup, and I'm not really sure how I would act if I didn't do that. Where are you at um, right now? I am the bubble guy. You are there. What is that, 50? No, there's – well, there's 40, but there's a double qualifier. So 41st is the bubble, and that's where I am Ooh, on the bubble. gotcha. Yeah, so I, I got to do halfway decent up there. I mean, I don't have to set the world on fire, but, but of course I, I want to do good, so – We'll see, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick I'm gonna stay on Lake St. Clair, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that this time, and and the last couple of times it's been one up there, but like I said, it's it's not real comfortable for me. But I'm sure we're gonna keep going there, and if all the tournaments now are starting to go out of the north end of St. Clair. It doesn't make sense to run all the way to Erie, so I'm gonna have to learn it. And this week's as good a time as any. The place is a factory. I mean, you're gonna catch them regardless. <laughs> it is, but it just it just the the place kind of pisses me off because. You just go out there and just throw around. You just throw around. Mm-hmm. Like they're not like you're not targeting anything. You know what I mean? Like you're not targeting, you know, the little pile of boulders out on the end of the reef like you are on Lake Erie or the little high spot on a rock vein or something like that. It's just like, oh, I don't know, I got this waypoint and I just make cir- hundred yard circles around this waypoint and it's all twelve feet deep and I just throw my stupid drop shot out there and like <laughs> Pounder on the end of it, like that's dumb. <laughs> like throwing a dart at a map. But I'm gonna have to learn how to go be dumb. <laughs> in, you know what? In reality, that shouldn't be very hard for me. <laughs> you just gotta dumb it down an extra notch. Yeah, I mean, I've been accused all my life of being a dumb ass. So. <laughs> well, speaking of being a dumb ass, yes, you, you as I, a you as a younger man, you as a younger. JT Kenny, um, yeah, you, you got, you probably got in trouble a little bit, didn't you? Absolutely. Yeah, have Not you ever? Even, really, it was more like a good bit. Hey, t- tell me about a little bit of trouble you got into. Oh, most of it was outdoor or fishing related in some way or another, because I had a problem with not wanting to go to school, especially once I got a driver's license. <laughs> I went. School because I figured that either, you know, I grew up in Maryland, so not only do we have bass, but we had trout as well. So they had either, I got some information that they had either stocked a stream or the turkeys were gobbling or the deer were starting to rut or I just like, like, I did not like school. Didn't work. And I didn't go very often. (laughs) Have you ever been shot at? license i did not go very often but it wasn't like i was out like down in the hood selling drugs or something no right. i was up on the couch trying to kill that big buck or i was you know chasing bass on the bed or something you know what i mean like it wasn't like a you know like a uh, sad story you know what i mean yeah it wasn't like, a was, hooligan you weren't a hooligan i i was accused a lot of being not a hooligan a uh Ah, there was some word that quite a few of my girlfriend's dads called me. A ruffian? <laughs> nah. Jagoff? Do what? <laughs> they call you a jagoff? <laughs> yeah, that was kill that one. Fifty of that definitely. But there was there was there was one, I can't remember what it was. It was like some old school term for a hellion or something. Degenerate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's still not the one I there was like different girls, their dads called me that in the same and I was like, I must really be that. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I truly can't. Hey, have you ever been shot at, JT? I wonder, Lily, she was, boy, she was something. That's a discussion <laughs> the other day, though. What was the question? Well, I, dude, I want to hear what you just said because you cut out there and, and you were thinking about her the other day, and I want to know what you said. No, I said one of those three girls that their dad called me the same thing. One of them's name was Lily. She was something else. Wow. Oh, Lily. Man. All for another day. What'd you say? Have I ever been shot at? Yeah. Have yeah. you? Yeah, I got shot at one night. We were drag racing cars. Um, 
I was probably two years out of high school, three years out of high school. Now, I had to have been three or four years out of high school because I remember we were drinking beer. But I got, we were drag racing and this guy came, there's only straight stretch because I grew up in Western Maryland and everything's all turns. And they built every road in Western Maryland on a cow path. It's all turns. There's one straight stretch, it's like a quarter mile long, we used to go there and drag race all the time. And the guy finally got pissed off and he came out shooting and I happened to be the guy that was starting everybody. And, uh, yeah, he shot at me. I got a couple pellets in my leg. He's a shooting shotgun. Wasn't a rifle. I got a couple pellets in my leg. I'll be all right. <laughs> you lived to tell about it. You lived to tell about it right there. Well, if a couple pellets take you down, that's no good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I heard that. Do or anything. <laughs> I heard that. Uh... Yeah, you you were you were a hippie for a while. You had some long hair going for a while, and I don't know if I'd consider myself a hippie because I wasn't like you know all into LSD or anything. So. Right. Well, I'm not either, and I have long hair, and people think I'm a hippie. Right. Yeah. But, but you don't. So you don't do LSD. You just into Molly or anything <laughs> like. <that. laughs> Mostly Red Bull. Mostly anthrax. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I I mean you you know JT, I am com- I don't even I'm just naturally crazy. I do not even drink. That's a true story. I don't. I don't I'm s- straight edge. I'm just com- I'm actually just wacky. I unfortunately am not the same way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so hey. I promise you, this is iced tea in this glass. <laughs> <laughs> My, is it true that you were getting chased by a wild boar and you got your hair stuck in the bushes and that's why you that, had to cut it? That is absolutely a true story. Tell um, us. I'm, I, I, I'm a big bow hunter. I like to. I, I love to hunt, but I don't like to hunt with guns. I like to hunt with a bow and arrow, like old school Indian shit. And uh, I got a buddy of mine into it, and who is actually now an excellent archer but at the time he wasn't that good and uh, he made a shot on a wild boar down here in florida just actually right behind my house here and uh you know he, he didn't he didn't drop it right away he had it a little bit back um but of course you don't let anything you don't you know if you shoot something you make every effort you can to recover that animal because we're not shooting stuff for fun you know we like to kill it you know to eat it so this Pig goes down his trail, goes down his trail, and finally, long story short, I end up, I'm belly crawling through this, I mean, thickest thick you can think of in, in the swamps of Florida. And finally, it's just, it gets to the point where, like, I don't even know which way it went, so I got I can't turn around and come back. I have to just start backing up, and my hair got caught up in everything in there, and I had so much stuff in my hair. <laughs> I mean, twigs and briars and everything. And I got home, and my girlfriend was running conditioner through my hair, trying to get all that stuff out of it. And finally, I just lost it. I was like, ah, just cut it off, cut it off. <laughs> and she did. She cut it off. So, and you live to wild. tell about it. True story of where my long hair went. There it is. And I had, I had thought it was a rumor, but it actually nope. is a true story. True. True as can be. It was all Kyle Walter's fault. He's my buddy that shot the pig and didn't kill it, and I went craw- belly crawling through bushes trying to find it. That's as true as, that's as, true as stories there could possibly be. <laughs> wait, so, wait, did you get the pig? No, we never did get it. Actually, we, actually, that is incorrect. We did get it. Like, three weeks later, it showed back up at the feeder. And he shot it again and killed it. <laughs> there it is. Redemption. Right. Right. And that- I did I did get that pig, hung it up, cut it up, processed it, and made poop of it. Nice. <laughs> have you have you done that deal yet? Like it, where where you guys are in Florida where you go out on the on the buggies boar hunting and then you jump off and slit their throats like tread barda? Well, yeah, I did, and that wasn't I, for some reason, and you would think a guy like me would be all over that, but that wasn't for me. I like I like the I like the Indian style. There's something about me. I don't I don't think there's any Native American in me, but there's something about me in that Indian style of stick and string killing them type thing. I like it. I like I like being getting in close and tricking them and figuring them out. And I don't know. That's just fun. It could be the peyote too. The peyote that's in you that 
Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Brought out the agent. Hey, we, we're going to play one more game with you, and then we're going to go. Are you ready? We're going to do a little, a little deal here called Bass and Life. Okay? This is Bass and Life. And right. what I am going to do is give you a word, and you relate it to bass fishing and life. You got it? I'll do it. Sure. It's real easy. Let's play Bass and Life with JT Kenny. MLF Superstar. FLW uh -huh. Superstar. JT Kenny. JT Kenny, the first thing in bass. Do you notice I kind of sound like Casey Kasem right now? You kind of did. I was expecting song number seven. The next song is by a guy that likes to chew the heads off of bats and chew razor blades. Ozzy Osbourne climbs to the top of the charts with Crazy Train. That J was actually... Good, dude. That was, that was fantastic. Thank you, dude. Thank you. The first word to you, JT, is glory hole. Glory hole. Related to bass fishing and life. Kentucky Lake and a bathroom and a truck stop. A bathroom and a go. truck stop in Kentucky Lake. That is that an acceptable answer? Yes, it is. Nice. Andy the Ginger Ninja gave you the thumbs up. Yes. The double whammy. The double whammy. <laughs> Two super spooks tied together and back-to-back -back tournaments. In back-to-back -back tournaments. So that's bass and life. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> tournament is life. <laughs> it's life. My life is going to tournaments, so it would be, it makes my life harder when they're back to back. <laughs> deadhead. The word is deadhead. Deadhead would be... A Grateful Dead follower that has subsequently eaten too much mushrooms and has found himself on the interstate run over by an 18-wheeler. Wow. That's a double dead head. Ass, it would be a stump. A stump. There. <laughs> wow. I, I think he got another one right. You are nailing this. Thank you. You are Thank nailing you. this. Thank you. <laughs> Parabolic bend. Bass and life. Parabolic bend. A crankbait rod and the yoga pose that you can see from the Starbucks window <laughs> looking across the street into the yoga class. Parabolic bend. Best answer nice. ever. Best answer ever on Stray Cast. Thank you. Amazing. I got a couple more for you couple more for you since you're doing so damn good. I think I'm ready. The gold digger. The gold digger. Bass and life. Gold digger would be a deep diving crankbait in Florida that matches the golden shiners that we have and the other would be a young lady of the evening that pursues bass fishermen in their heyday. Whoa, that's a gold digger. Right there. She doesn't realize that bass fishermen don't make as much money as everybody thinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to be sadly mistaken, boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> natives. The word is natives. Natives relating to bass fishing would be a native trout. Ooh. And a lot of the northern California lakes would be a really great way to match the hatch. And then a native in life would be a beautiful Native American gua in the prime of her life. Oh, yes. JT, you see, you yeah. had a glimmer in your eye. It was outstanding. I, I told you there's a little engine in me. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to put a little engine in her, apparently. Ah! Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. Ladies and gentlemen, JT Kenny nailed it right there. Best answers ever. I would have to say that you uh, are one of the most creative minds yet to play that game. Outstanding. Yeah, the deadhead double meaning. Uh, are, are, now, are the, are, excuse me. Are the phone lines working? Do we got? Okay, so there. He's been on hold for forty minutes. This guy. We're 40 we, we got time for one phone call. Are you Are you ready for it, JT? 
hit me. Okay, here we are. You, we got a fish on the line. You were on with J.T. Kenny. Superman. Oh, my God. Y- yeah. Can J.T. hear me? Can J.T. hear me? Can you hear him, J.T.? Uh, not very good. God. Okay. Is it, look, I'll, I can play interpreter, okay? Inter- interpret to him that my crown and diet is almost empty, so we, we can't have this too long. Yeah, so you got to make it quick, <laughs> caller. J- J- JT's all- okay. The well has almost run dry. I have, I have many, many, many questions. I think, but the most important question I have is: Did JT just hang out with Chad during Circuit Breaker just because he had a Keystone Light sponsorship? Ooh, okay, that's a good question. He, this caller wants to know if you hung out with Chad during Circuit Breaker just because. He had a Keystone Light sponsorship. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, the only thing that I hung out with that guy, everybody thought we were friends. That was not true. He had free beer, and I was being a succubus to his free beerism. You are so honest. You are brutally <laughs> honest. Important question. No, I have another sure important question. Okay, one more. Well, it, 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 but at the time, question, it was just for his free please. beer. Please. Please, please, one more question. Okay, one more. He wants to ask you one more question. Are you cool with this, yeah. JT? Absolutely. Hit me. Okay, go go ahead there. Please explain to me why Keystone Light is only 11.5 ounces and every other beer is 12 ounces because after I watched Circuit Breaker, I drank that shit for a long time. <laughs> And I realized that I could drink a lot more at 11.5 versus 12. Is that, there a secret? That, that's a great question, too. He wants to know why <laughs> there is only 11.5 ounces in a Keystone Light, where most beers have 12 ounces. What's the reasoning behind that? And he found out that he drank a lot of Keystone Lights because of Circuit Breaker, and he was able to drink more beer. Why is it only 11.5? So uh, how Keystone Light is made is they take the hops and the barley. You know, it's all Miller Coors owns all that. Yeah, yeah. The hops and the barley, when it's fresh and first put in, they run the water through that, and that comes out as Coors Light. <laughs> and then they run another batch of fresh mountain water through the same hops and barley, which is basically old used up hops and barley and that comes out as keystone light so there's you're not much hops and barley grains in each one because you're drinking a cheaper ass product so that's what makes it a little bit less is is the Coors Light already got all the good stuff out of the hops and barley so that's that's where you end up with point five. <laughs> They're amazing. Hey, tell him. Write that down. <laughs> he says, "Write that down." Tell him to. He wants you to write that down, caller. Write that shit down. I, I have recorded. That That's shit actually true. Sure. That and the cox juice thing. I'm just dropping knowledge bombs all over the place. <laughs> yeah, man. You are so much smarter on Skype than you are in person. <laughs> right? <Isn't that> amazing? <laughs> <laughs> A whole crew of people around here feeding me information. You have a whole, you have a whole team. Look at, yeah. Look at everybody all around me. See how many people I got around here. They're all feeding me information. It's like a newsroom there. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> JT, any last words you want to say to your fans or your sponsors before you get the hell out of here? Honestly, no. I, I think I've done enough damage for tonight. <laughs> Dude, it, it's always fun to have you on this show, and I'm glad you got the Skype this time. I like it. I like it because I can be myself. I don't have to have any agenda on this thing. It's pretty sweet. Dude, and and that's the magic of, of this Bass Fishing Talk Show. I didn't even ask you what size worm sinker that you use. I know. It was, it was awesome because I, I don't really know. I just reached in the bottom of the damn boat and grabbed something throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> that is JT Kenny. MLF superstar, FLW superstar, and all-around awesome dude. JT, thank you so much, dude. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right, safe travels. Knock him out. You need to do good at Claire, bro. 
Damn right. See you, buddy. There it is right there. JT Kenny. Hey, uh, don't go anywhere. Put the power poles down. When we get back, we have the winner of the Sturgeon Bay Open coming on the phone line, Jason Stangle. And don't forget, you can still like and share the live Facebook feed for a $50 voucher to alphaangler.com. Nicole Dorr, Bass Fishing Supermodel, coming on at the end of the show to give away the prize. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Jason Stengel. Step up your game. It has been said that professionals are only as good as the tools they work with. And Alpha Angler has developed the ultimate set of tools for you, the competitive angler. Alpha Angler Custom Rods, brought to fruition by the passion of Master Craftsman Jake Boomer and 2017 BASS Angler of the Year, Brandon Palinick. Alpha Angler Rods are custom made in the USA, designed and engineered to be perfect. Alpha Angler utilizes a very unconventional approach to making the very best bass rods, from drop shotting to flipping. Alpha Angler's focus is on building perfectly balanced tournament grade bass rods at an affordable price. Join the Alpha Lusion today and purchase direct at alphaangler.com. Step up your game. Welcome back to Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. Uh, sitting to my right is Ryan Popcorn Whitaker, J.P. High, the hip-hop fisherman. He's back there fielding your social media questions. And producer Andrew Ellenberger over there. Right now, we are super stoked to bring to you the winner of the Sturgeon Bay Open, the one, the only. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jason Stangle right there. <laughs> Woo! Yes. What's up, Jason? Are you there? <laughs> Where'd this guy go? He hung up the phone. Oh, let's get him back. Tell me a story, Ryan. Anyway. Tell me a story about campfires. Um, and Girl Scout cookies. One time I burned all of my clothes in a campfire. campfire. A vampire campfire? A vampire <laughs> campfire. <laughs> was and it in Transylvania? It was not planned. I didn't have any other clothes. Do you know what this is? And I was wearing a clear rain poncho. Hello. Hey. Jason. How's it going? He hung hey. up on us. Why did he hang up on us? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was my Bluetooth device that uh, did that, so I didn't take it off Bluetooth. I think our timing was a little off. That's all right, though. Thanks for coming on, dude. Hey, no problem. It's an honor to be on the show. I watch you guys once in a while. You guys are crazy. Thanks, dude. Awesome. Man. I pride myself on craziness, actually. Craziness is what we I went to crazy to school. I flunked out. <laughs> Yeah, man. Hey, congratulations on the uh, on the big win, Sturgeon Bay Open. It was uh, it was pretty pretty incredible. It's been a long time coming, and uh, you know, you, you sometimes you, know, you start to wonder if you're ever going to win that tournament. You know, I I fish up there so much, and uh, had several opportunities to just kind of capitalize, and everything kind of came together that weekend. So, how how many uh, how many times have you fished it? Uh, probably 23 or 24 years. Wow. Uh, tournament, tournament's been going on, I think, 28 years now. And, uh, so, yeah, I'm usually in the top 20, but, uh, everything kind of came together this tournament. And we got to give a congrats to your partner also, John Ulmer. Um, it was a team tournament and, and teamwork is, I'm sure, came into play in this one. Yeah, John, uh, it's the first year John and I fished together. You know, we usually room together for this tournament. He hasn't fished the last couple of years, but uh, he's a great friend of mine, and uh, it was a pleasure fishing the tournament with him, and we had a blast, you know? Yeah, you guys definitely knocked it out. I mean, a, a big bass of 754. Wow. It's just That is just incredible. And and some of the – I mean, so many fish over, over 7 pounds, 6 pounds, tons over 6 pounds. It's just – you know, I've been up there one time – and uh, I I hear all the stories of how good it is. It was not good when I was there, not for me, but in the, in the fall. But I mean, every year I'm still amazed when I look at the weights. I mean, a winning weight of fifty seven eighty seven. It's crazy for two days. It's ten fish. It's it's just amazing. I mean, what was that seven and a half? One of the biggest ones you've caught. Was that the biggest one you caught? 
That's probably the fourth or fifth biggest one I caught. I've caught one, uh, several of them in upper sevens. Fourth or fifth but, biggest. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I never caught an eight up there. Uh, they're obviously lurking around. Somebody caught an eight, seven, eight this year in the Sturgeon Bay Open. That's crazy. And this year is like, I think this kind of set up nice because uh, the ice came off two and a half weeks ago. It wound up rather quickly. And the fish came in really healthy the last few years. They came in a little skinnier and had some uh, lesions on them. And this year they... They're fat. Nice. Now, now, were these fish in spawn mode, or was this mostly all pre-spawn fish? Uh, there were, these were all pre-spawn fish. They were just coming up at, you know, on Friday, I caught, you know, we caught some of the bigger ones on Friday morning, the first day of the tournament, and you could tell they just came in the shallows. You hook them, and they just kind of roll over, and they come right to the net. And on Saturday, those same fish in that same area, when you hooked them, they, you could tell they were up, up in that shallows for a day or two, and they're they're probably just starting to spawn now. Got their bearings. Wow. Um, I got to ask, too. I mean, you fished this so many years, and it really seems like, I mean, you guys were consistent uh, both days. I mean, 20, what was it, 28 pounds, 28 and a half pounds day one, 29, over 29 day two. Now, looking at the other weights, I was really checking it out, and, and no one was that consistent. And, I mean, to catch over twenty eight pounds two days in a row, that's just insane. It's amazing to me. I, I can't even I can't even imagine it. Um what what was the key to finding those bigger fish? Well, we fished for predominantly in the both days in a group of about thirty to forty, maybe even fifty boats the second day. Uh wow. we caught some other key fish that we left the group, you know, midday or towards the end of the day, but most of the all the biggest fish came out of that group of people. The first day we you know, they wanted, it was all on retrieval speed. We were throwing key techs the first day. Mm-hmm. And in the morning, they wanted just barely moving, but couldn't be touching the bottom. Sometimes you hit a rock, kind of get a reaction strike. And then, the, the, and that was sunny out, windy. And the second day was overcast, calm conditions. And the area got beaten up the first day because everybody was catching them in there. And the second day, we didn't even throw the key techs, so we just went to tubes and and just kind of work the tube and try to get a reaction bite off of it. Wow. That's incredible that you can do that in a group of boats like that. I always hear these stories from a lot of the other guys, you know. We know a lot of the same people up there fishing Wisconsin Bass Nation, and everybody's trying to get me up there, and I just won't go. Again, the thing is, it gets good here, too, so I don't want to go. But It's not as good as there. No. To put it into perspective, do you know what the Illinois – We I live in Chicago and fish, you know, uh, Lake Michigan around the Chicago area in Indiana. Do you know what the Illinois state record smallmouth is? I don't have a clue. It's pathetic. It's six pounds, seven ounces. And we have Lake wow. Michigan. And I, I can't, we just can't figure out why no one can break this thing. Having Lake Michigan, we have a lot of fish here. They just don't grow. And then looking at those weights, I was just getting depressed. You know, so there's like, like 50 big bass weighed over our Illinois state record up there in that tournament. Just that tournament. <laughs> Just, I got to go up and just haul one back in the live. I, I keep telling them, Jason, <laughs> that that JP and Ryan need to fish that open. They need they need to fish it. Yeah, come on up. They could be the next Jason you know, Stengel. That's what we're going you, for. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's uh, you know, it's not it, people get scared away from the big water, and for the most part, you can get away and practice and find the safe haven. You know where that the wind's blowing bad. Uh, and they have a blow day for the tournament, so and it's pretty easy to find the fish in the springtime because the fish is rather small in the springtime. Right, right. You got all the all the protected bays and stuff like that. Right. How many boats were in that deal, Jason? Uh, there was 127 this year. Wow. wow. And and what is how how much rubles did you bring home? What was the prize? Uh, so we won a valued at about a forty three thousand dollar Ranger bass boat. And uh, seventy four hundred dollars cash. Nice. Wow. What are you doing with the boat? Uh, actually, my partner John bought it from me. Awesome. By, my half, and uh, so he, yeah, he's got a walleye boat, and uh, he wanted to have a bass boat to run around with on the uh, Wolf River. So works out good for both of us. Nice. That worked out perfect. <clears throat> Jason, I got to ask you about something that happened uh, a couple years ago in the state championship. You, you've gotten the reputation of being one of the most accommodating boaters in the state tournaments to your co-anglers. 
Uh, I heard a story about some real rough water and a co-angler with some with some stomach issues, and you, you, you let him release something on your boat. You want to tell us about that? <laughs> yeah, so uh, kind of a quick story here. So the second day of the state tournament, I was running way up towards Chambers Island, which is about a 35-mile run from uh, the ship canal, and uh, it was rough that day. And we took off. We were down about five miles out in the rough water, and I look over in the, the co-angler, and he's pale white. I'm like, are you all right? He goes, dude, he goes, I get seasick. And I'm like, you're fishing the state tournament and you get seasick on the, on the Bay of Green Bay? And it's really rough. And so we pull in this bay and, and I said, uh, well, we only got about 25 miles more to go. And you see that island out there? You can barely see that's where we're running to. And he instantly got really sick. Oh, man. <laughs> so he was puking and I just started running. We got there in about an hour and, and we pull into the bay in the Chambers Island and it's a little calmer in there. And he's like, dude, he goes, I, I really got to go to the bathroom. I said, just go out the back. But no, he goes, I got to take a number two. And I said, well, I said, you see this last swell in the back by the motor? I said, there's toilet paper back here. I said, just do that. I said, I'm not taking to the shore. I just, it's rough out and I'm not, there's no place to go. <laughs> so he did his business and then uh, he sat down on his seat and he slept the whole tournament. Wow. <laughs> did you make him clean it at least afterwards? Uh, the water, you know, the waves washed it out, so. <laughs> It was all fine. <laughs> Nature's dude wipe. That's what that is. Nature's dude that wipe. That is awesome. I mean, there's a lot of boaters that won't even, uh, you know, net a fish for a coang where you're letting them take dumps on your boat. Yeah, that's a pretty big That's deal. a nice guy. That is. You pr- <laughs> probably made him breakfast, too. I think we got, uh, we, we, you know, we're on, the, on Facebook, and I think we got a viewer question. Uh, JP might want to ask here. You got something, JP? Hey, Jason. First off, congrats. Uh, we Thanks. got we got a viewer watching. He wants you to compare the the bay from twenty years ago and compare it today. What's the viewer's name? Kyler. Kyler. Okay. Oh, the bay for twenty years ago. You probably. I mean, there's so many more fishermen up there now. But twenty years ago, you probably caught more numbers, but the size wasn't there. I mean, if you went out on a derby out there, you had a four pound average. You were you were knocking on the door and winning the thing. You know, maybe even three and a half pound average. You know, uh, so the fish. You know, it was before the gobies, and every all the bass are looking up at they're chasing the old wives and smelt, and and now the bass are looking down, and they don't have to go far, and they're eating these gobies up. That's, I mean, that's the biggest dif- difference. Yeah, to to put that into perspective, um, in this tournament, fiftieth place was forty two pounds. Holy shit! So if you're catching twenty pounds a day, you're not even getting there. I mean, that's... And 20 years ago, that with a 12 fish limit, you were you were walking away with the derby. Really? Even with the 12 fish yeah. limit? Wow. Now yeah, today... early on, as the, as the years got older, you know, then it, it bumped up to 48, 50 pounds of 12 fish, you know. And... But it's, I mean, getting close to knocking at 60 pounds. What is the biggest weight in this tournament? Do you know? The heaviest weight? Well, uh, the heaviest weight for so the, the last two years, it's been a, a five fish per day limit. Right. So there was, uh, I think the highest 12 fish limit was like 65 pounds caught by uh, John Allen, Scott Orta. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. In several years, several, you know, one of these years, uh, somebody else is going to bring in a, uh, the dirty 30 with five fish. A couple of years ago, we brought in 30 pounds in the Cabela's tournament up there with five fish. Well, you guys were only three quarters of a pound off this year. 29, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, 29 can, 22. And the weekend before, there was a Sturgeon Bay, the Sturgeon Bay City Tournament, and uh, Ed Erasmus and his partner, they brought in a pair of 29-pound bags. That's 30 pounds. So, Just like yeah. that 878, that's a 9. Yeah, it's a 9. It's a 9 in my <laughs> right? book, Jason. Right? <laughs> that is outstanding. Jason, uh, dude, again, congratulations on a major accomplishment, man. I mean, that is a big deal. A lot of years that you put in. And, and finally, you did it, man. How about a round of applause there for Jason Stengel? That is outstanding, dude. Thanks, a- guys. Amazing. Jason, is there is there anything that you want to say uh, to to the viewers out there, to your sponsors, bef- before we go? Uh, no, just, like, thanks for watching tonight. And, uh, you know, I I am uh, sponsored by Pam Selport and Ranger Boats and Emmerud, Falcon Rods, and uh, Hummingbird in Dakota and – Hummingbird and Minkota, I use all tricks, and that thing is unreal. You know, that was a big key to the tournament was uh, 
getting a spot lock, especially when you're in a group of people. You get a fish on hit spot lock, and you're just glued into that spot. Right. It, awesome. It's a game changer. I, I hear that. It is. That, that spot is. lock. And, uh, and, and I got a message from Dan Bravarni. He says he can catch more smallmouth than you on his jig than any other bait that you might even think of throwing. So. <laughs> Oh, Dan, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. <laughs> Dan, it makes a good swim, Jake. Outstanding. There, yeah. there is no doubt about it. Jason, right. thank you so much. Again, congratulations. And uh, we uh, we look forward to having you back on the show. You don't have to just win to come on here, you know. So Give me a call anytime. I, I really appreciate you guys having me on the show tonight. Our pleasure. Our Thanks, pleasure. Jason. That is Jason Stangle. He is the 2018 winner of the Sturgeon Bay Open. That, that is pretty cool stuff right there. Uh, we're almost coming up here to the time. and it, it, the, 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 the tally is being put together. The votes are being counted. It's the like and share the Facebook feed here uh, for the chance to win the Alpha Angler uh, $50 redemption code. Yes. It, it is right there, and we're going to have Nicole Dore, bass fishing supermodel, tell us who won here shortly and i'm looking i'm looking at this uh this deal right here what are you looking at yeah we'll do it after nicole comes on but i want to i want to talk a a little bit about itunes reviews yes and and comments because there's some good ones on here people have been finally listening i have not seen they've been finally listening to it I want to hear bad ones. Are there bad ones? No, they're they're super bad. I like oh, them. Oh, that's what yeah, that's yeah. what we should read. No, that's what I am reading. Okay, you, don't you worry. Are there any about me? Yes. Good. Yes. Let's read those. You you were referred to as um, um, that um, Connor McGregor's um, malnourished in prenatal care twin brother. Okay. Yes, I'll take it. And and I was referred to as um. The result of um, Hulk Hogan, Dog the Bounty Hunter, and a cracked out Britney Spears threesome. Nice. Yes. Uh, and That's a good one. Andy was referred to as a Jim Henson Muppet reject. Okay. And they said that that JP is the the coolest one on the show. <laughs> yeah. I, I never get it. I just heard my name. Yeah, I, I, was... I never get it. And then and then but they did say after all. The best show on bass fishing on the web. The third best. Yeah. No, they said the best. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they said the best. I'll take it. There's another guy. Here, let's go to this one here. Tell me whenever you need me to stop. I'm just going to keep going here. Here's some more reviews. I want you to read. Let's get some raunch. Is there any raunch? Yeah, there's that. Well, that was pretty raunchy. Uh, Hands down the best podcast with Straight Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television in the title. (laughs) Boring. Z-Monster. That's from the Z-Monster. Uh, always fun and entertaining show. These guys always get the best guests from bass fishing. Put the power poles down and check it out. Does anybody say they need to pull it back a bit? Uh, no, here's this guy. Here, wait. Yeah, this guy's, really, this guy's really good. Where? Wait. The, I was really excited to have another bass fishing podcast. Sadly, the host tries a bit too hard to be zany. He's talking about and me. And it comes of a, out a bit hacky. I know. We, we, no, holy cow. It's Nicole Dorr, bass fishing supermodel. She's in a swinging chair. Are you in a gazebo? Oh, hi. <laughs> what are you doing, Nikki? I'm hanging out at home. Nothing much. You got a swing wicker chair? Yeah, I got a swing a Did you say my name? Wow. See? Yeah, isn't it nice? It's wicker a, chair. It is awesome. It's Whitaker. That. That's, oh, right? is that a Whitaker chair or a wicker chair? Uh, Wicker. Wicker? I hardly even know her. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> What's going on, Nikki? <laughs> Nothing much. I'm just hanging out at home. I, li- um, I like it. These guys want to go, but I'll talk to you all night. Great. Yeah. I'm, I'm How you um, been? I'm good. But before we did go on, I just wanted to say, though, I can't believe you got Brandon and JT to come on the show tonight. What, what, do, you mean crazy. You, what do you mean you can't believe it? We get the best guests in the business. Every well, week. between us, straight cast, Justin Timberlake was my favorite JT until you had Mr. Kenny on here tonight. Wow. Yeah. Kaboom. <laughs> boing, 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 boing. There it is. JT Kenny's got a super fan right now. What do you know? <laughs> Need to get him to host SNL. 
you, that you, would be fun. You look amazing tonight. Why are you all dolled up? Yeah, don't ask me that. You will tell why. Why are you all dressed yeah. up? You got For awesome makeup ass. on. Your your brow game game is strong. You have shining pearly whites. Well, I'm I'm going to Chippendales tonight. Whoa! <laughs> to to yeah. see those little squirrels, isn't that what those are? They're chipmunks. Chipmunks. Um, Six five and have abs. And yes, those squirrels. I'm going to see tonight. Nicole Door at Chippendales tonight, exclusively in Las Vegas, Nevada. You're gonna see oh. the only men that wear three socks. That's what you're going to see. Like Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. No, they only wear one. These guys wear three. Three socks for added fluff. Yes. The two pack don't. What? Wear three socks? You don't do that? Uh, just when I go to the club. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Understood. Only when I'm going to meet Shorty at the club do I do that. Oh, really understood. <laughs> so what's going on? I mean, there's all kinds of great prizes given away. Every week here on Stray Cast. It's probably the easiest show to win stuff on. I know. That's why I'm on. <laughs> um, but the giveaway tonight is a $50 gift card, actually, to Alpha Angler. Ooh. Of the compliment of this big boom. And uh, basically, the thing on the shop is to merch. You know what's up, but you know what's up. It's obvious that gods are. Hey, wait, Nikki, hold on one second. You're, you're kind of cutting out. Hang on. So, now. Yeah, stand still. And I think because I think it's when you're moving that we're losing you. So can you tell us again what you said? Because it was outstanding. <laughs> Great. Okay. It's a $50. Can you hear me? Are we all good? Say Nikki? Yeah. It's, it's cutting out pretty bad. She's frozen. The frozen screen. The frozen. Wait, there she is. She's back. Movement. Is it working? Yes, it's way better now. I think now. it's way better. Okay, awesome. Well, sorry. That's okay. Um, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, a fifty-dollar gift card to alphaignard.com. Um, compliments of Jake Palmer. Yes. And. Used for anything on the shop from rods to their murder. And if you do know what's up, then you obviously know Alpha Rods are the finest in the game. And if you've never had the honor to try one yet, um, so yeah. It's a perfect chance. Mm -hmm. And the winner tonight happens to be, I'm sorry if I butcher your name, I don't mean to, um, Eric Dan Janovi. Eric Dan Janovi, <laughs> I think. Eric John Bon Jovi? Eric <laughs> Jan. Oh, really close. <laughs> Eric, Eric, John Bon Jovi? D-A-M-J-A-N-O-V-I. So, he won. Eric, <laughs> Jan Eric Janovi. Uh, er Eric, yeah. so John Bon Jovi from New Jersey is the winner of the Alpha Angler $50 prize. He's a little runaway. Congratulations, John Bon Jovi. <laughs> you are the winner. <laughs> Woo! Well, congrats, um... To redeem your prize, just send us a message here at the StrayCast Facebook page, and we'll be happy to help you out with that. There it is. Nikki, thank you so much, and have fun with those chipmunks tonight, okay? Thank you, Pat. Yeah. I appreciate it. And, and <laughs> we'll see you next week. Where are you going to be next week? Are you still going to be in Vegas? Next at, Today, I actually start my road trip back to Chicago. That's tomorrow? I mean, no, next. A week from today. There, she's coming back home. <laughs> The promised child is coming home. I'll be home. There it is. Have fun tonight. Safe travels. And uh, we will see you next week on the Skype machine. Yes, you will. Thanks, guys. There it is. Nicole Dorr, bass fishing supermodel. Follow her, Nicole A. Orr, on Instagram, right? Yes, that's me. There it is, right there. Hey, that's another episode of Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television Extended <laughs> Edition. Super extended. And who? what is the viewer's... Uh, name. Da Damjanovic. Oh, Dan Damjanovic. Eric Damjanovic. Gotcha. Eric Damjanovic. Yep, he's still watching. Okay, cool. So, cool. Eric, send a... Congrats. Uh, send a, a message. 
to the uh, to the straight cast. Congratulations. And, you, and you'll win a $50 alpha coupon. That's pr- Magic happens here on Straight Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. You guys want to do another hour? Yeah. You, are you ready to do another hour of the show? Hey, thank you to all you viewing out there. Thank you to the sponsors. Without you, this show cannot happen. We return next week with amazing guests. Can't even tell you. It's so damn good. I'm Pat Renwick, Ryan Whitaker, J.P. High, and the Ginger Ninja, Andrew Ellenberger. We all bid you peace until next week. Yeah.